We we're here finally with a bottle of wine. My God, that was a test and a half. Um, all right, uh, let's say hello to everybody here. Uh, I can't even scroll my chat that far back. Uh, let's try it. Here. All right, Mister G steps, cheese wicked, old school Kodo, Prince Face, uh, Acmuffin. Uh, Doxter, uh, Amok, Heldrich. <laughs> yeah, it is when, the, when it is when I uh, can't go out and get it. Um, I think I've, I've probably missed loads of people, but my chat has gone up so far. Grey Defender as well, Andy Magic Knight, um, uh, Judge Groovyman, uh, for I. Uh, Prince Faze, I think I already said. Uh, if I missed you, I'm sorry, guys. It, it's just gone up the screen so quickly. So, um, welcome along. Sorry for the slightly late start to this tonight. Uh, let me just get everything that was. I've got a buffer then for some reason. Oh, no drop frames though. Okay, cool. Let me get everything on screen properly. Uh, my God, what a what a hassle that was! There we go. I can see things now. Uh, thank you for the bits. I'm up very much appreciated. And yes, getting the wine was difficult tonight. I was supposed to have that uh, Chateau Neuf de Pat come uh, today, um, but with two stops to go, it it suddenly said at nine o'clock that it was coming tomorrow. So I had to um, I had to get something different. So I got my. Uh, usual Ned Sauvignon Blanc. It's not in the wine uh, command at the moment because I haven't had time to do it, so it's wronged. <laughs> uh, and let's give you all point. In fact, because you've all been so patient, I'm going to give you 20,000. Because you've all been very patient. <sighs> okay, so today I did uh, a little bit uh, a co- first thing in the morning so a very late stream last night again thanks to everybody who came along for that it was a uh, kind of cool to see uh, so many people uh still <laughs> still watching me on a on a school night um oh god that's refreshing god i needed that get rid of the lemonade now <sighs> right um yeah, so so I worked on a system that allowed me to load in um, fonts on the fly from the cartridge. Um, I got that working final after about three hours last night. Um, and then today I tried to fix some of the issues that I had with the cartridge format. So the, the problem I had with the cartridge format is that um, both Gmod um, and... Uh, magic desks don't work in the debugger if the cartridge size is too big um, and I want this to be a 512 kilobyte cartridge um, so it wasn't going to work so instead what I have done today is I've added easy flash support to my cartridge thing which wasn't as easy as I was hoping it would be um, but now I have that now I have uh, easy flash support so this is this is running from easy flash now uh, which is a little bit slower to boot um, it's there's an extra it has to load one extra bank in uh, in order to do this but um it does work so that's good uh, let's move my discord over here uh, what's... oh okay <laughs> um yeah so th this is loading from easy flash now so the the difference with easy flash is um easy flash allows you to load 8 kilobyte and 16 kilobyte um banks and that 16 kilobyte bank can either be from uh, 8000 to 8000 and e thousand to fffff or it can be from 8000 to c thousand so um it's a bit different in the way that it works so what i've done is I, i've made it work as close to magic desk as possible in that it will only load eight kilobyte banks once it's booted but the initial boot uh, boots in Ultimax mode, which is um, cartridge banked in at 8000 to 9 FFF uh, and also from E1000 to FFF. So what you have to do is you have to put some initialized 
navigation code where the kernel should be because there's no kernel loaded at all uh, when you boot the easy flash um, so I'll quickly show you what that consists of and then we'll get into the stuff we're going to do on the game so what that means is basically when um, <laughs> party time <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Laughing face indeed, and cheers, Doc. Thanks for the bits, dude. Um, so basically, this is this is my normal cartridge loading routine, and it's it's fairly straightforward. It just copies some stuff into the area that you specify, um, loads the first bank in, and boots it with. Um, with Easy Flash, I have to add this extra stuff in. So, what would normally be bank one on a on a um, on a Gmod car or a um, a Magic Desk car is actually still bank zero, but it's it's the high RAM part of bank zero or the high ROM part of bank zero. Um, and so, what that does is this actually has to initialize everything. So, this has to do the work to kind of set set up the um, set up the cartridge so it can boot the stuff in the low run and what that means is that at the very end you have to fill it all the way to the end of the bank and then at the very end of the bank you have to set the reset vector so what this means is that when when you boot and kernel um, is replaced by the cartridge rom it looks for the bytes that are at the reset vector um, which normally is is going to be um, your cartridge if it's magic desk or whatever but if it's not magic desk and it's uh, easy, easy flash. You have to specify those. So what you do is you specify e zero zero, and you can e zero zero zero, and then you can put your your cold start stuff at the beginning um, of that high ROM bank, which then will copy the stuff that you need to launch the low ROM bank. So it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, and the other thing it means as well is when you load um, when you load a static bank in. So if I want to load bank uh, one in. Bank one is not um, bank one where it's not in the same place where bank one would be on Magic Desk. It's actually uh, it's actually four thousand and ninety six bytes further than that. Sorry, eight thousand one hundred ninety two bytes, eight k further along than that. So I have to do this little calculation here where if I, if it's easy flash, I have to take one off the bank number. Uh, so the reason I do this is just to maintain compatibility. So. This will all still work with um, any of the cartridges. Uh, and all I have to do is in here, just switch out uh, which cart I want. So if I want to do this on Gmod 2, I change it to Gmod 2. If I want to do it on Magic Desk, I change it to Magic Desk. And then in my in my make file, uh, I don't want that here. I just have to change this here to the same constant. So this will now create a cartridge for Magic Desk. And when I load that, it should load in magic desk format uh, and you can kind of tell the difference because there's a little little flash uh actually you can tell the difference because it starts black in in the easy flash it starts white because there's some code i put in there but that's now running from um that's running from magic desk uh but what that doesn't do it doesn't allow me to run it on the debugger so you'll see if i try and launch that in the debugger it's just going to sit there and do that. It's not going to load at all. And that's because it thinks it's an invalid cartridge format because Magic Desk is supposed to be 128 kilobytes, but it's fairly flexible. So we can uh, we can add more. Yeah, let me start the races as well. Sorry, guys. <coughs> there we go. Um, so by, by making this easy flash, uh, this does two things, actually. By making it easy flash, it means that I can test it in um, easily in the debugger. Uh, but it also means I can I can write generic um, uh, save routines as well because uh, Magic Desk doesn't support save save into the cartridge whereas Easy Flash does so we can have high score saving and stuff built into the cartridge here. So anyway, that's that's the kind of gist of what I've been doing today to get ready for this stream. There's a few things I haven't been able to do, so I haven't been able to get breakpoints working um, from the cart. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is. Um, I tried making uh, a make file which launched the debugger, but then it doesn't actually boot. So you can see the cartridge boots here. Uh, but if I jump to this make file, um, it doesn't actually, it starts to boot the cartridge. In fact, it doesn't boot the cartridge at all here. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, it has worked this time. Oh, interesting. 
but it hasn't put any of the symbols in. Okay, but um, that's probably just because I don't have the symbol stuff in here. Let me just copy this entire file. Uh, oh, I've, I've fucked it out. All right, but um, I can I can look into that at another time. It's going to be fine for tonight. So what are we going to do tonight? Um, so tonight I want to get the the Mac um, screen flipping working. Um, I'm going to do this before I do the collision, just because uh, I'd like to I'd like to test this routine out and make sure it's fine. Um, I'm sure it will be, but we'll we'll give it a try anyway. Um, yeah, let me sort out all my screen windows over because I've got windows all over the show here. Uh, okay, right. I think that's everything. Yeah. All right. Um, did the races start? By the way, I didn't see. Oh, yeah, they must have done your typed race. Okay. Um. I was, but I turned it off, so I need to, I need to add it on uh, again here. I, I will I will sort that out after the stream. I, I was kind of I was in the middle of doing it, and then then this wine debacle happened, so I, I was more focused on getting my wine. Um, I know I don't usually drink wine on a um, on a Thursday, but while I'm not working, I might as well. Okay, so we had this code written this is this is all good now we tested this last night and it, it, it's it is working uh correctly um at the moment it's just drawing one map in place um we need to we need to animate that in so what i'm going to do um once once I, i'm going to export the maps in a minute i'll show you what i've got um andy sent me some uh, Andy Roberts sent me some uh, PNG of the maps, so I've had a little edit just to kind of edit them down to something that I can use. Um, we'll import that into the map data, so I should have a maps file in here somewhere. Right up here. So we're gonna we're gonna change this map data to to have the the levels that we need, um, and then once I've done that, we'll we'll start splitting this routine up. Um, Actually, it doesn't really need splitting up, but this this map copy here needs to be something separate, um, and then we need another routine which is gonna uh, which is gonna bring it in. So, so let's have a look at the map. So, this is the the PNG, um, or or it's it's built from the PNG that I was sent today. Um, so you can probably see from the, so these red lines mark the size of a C sixty four screen, uh, but you can probably see from ignore the ones over here because I've done some editing on those. If you look at um, the screens over this side, they're much wider. So if I move this screen um, over to here, you'll see they're about eight characters wider uh, and two characters higher um, than they need to be. So I've had to kind of squash these down a little bit. Um, so that's what I've been doing today, uh, well, this afternoon. Well, I say this afternoon, this evening, actually. I've got the things quite late. Um, so all I've done is I've created uh, probably about what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine screens, um, which is going to be enough for us to to do this this work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this map down to that size, uh, and then I'm going to export these sub maps, and we'll get um, twelve sub maps out, uh, and then I'll go and sort it out so it's in the same format that we we uh decided on last night um and then we can start having a look at getting those to load in from different points so we'll have something similar to what we've got on the um game boy game where every screen will have a list of the screens pointed to north south east and west they'll be generated automatically um i'm going to write a script that actually does this um export for me uh, and formats everything correctly um but for now we will use um we will use some manual values for these so okay so uh first of all let's set these all to white because it, it's bothering that, that uh, they're not and you can see here we've got 640 characters for this entire map at the moment so it's it's definitely beneficial the work that we did uh last night to get this to load um fonts on the fly because there's no way we can have all of these loading in memory all all the same time so Okay, so let's let's shrink this down. So this is what one sixty wide, seventy two high. So sixty wide, 
72 high. Oh, there we go. Uh, and let's export those maps. So I need to export the character set, um, which I've got in here. Uh, I can't remember which one it was now. Is it this one? Yes, this one. Um, and then with that character set, so one, one thing I can do as well is things that are reused a lot. So for instance, um, the, this pattern here is reused on pretty much every screen. Every screen has one of these somewhere. Um, I can move them down into the low half of the character set. And basically, instead of just checking if something is space and not using it, I can check, um, I, I can check a, a va if it's less than a certain value, don't bother copying it, just use what's already in the character set. Uh, but that's something I'm going to work out based on on a script that I'm going to write, which is going to generate these uh, these map files and work out how many unique characters are on each screen and give me a load of information about those things. So, um, okay, right. Let's uh, let's export this then. So we've exported the characters. So we need to export these sub maps now. So unfortunately, um, Charpad doesn't have a way of exporting the sub maps in sixteen bit as binary files. So we have to do it in this text um, text way, which is fine. Um, but I'm going to write uh, an int uh, I'm going to write some kind of um, some kind of script interpreter. Just going to take the CTM file and output the files that I need. So uh, all right, let's move that over there so I can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. Okay, just keeping up with what everyone's chatting about. Oh, this wine tastes good tonight. I think it's because I've been drinking red a lot recently. So the wine I was supposed to be drinking tonight was going to be a red as well, but I'm going to have to wait till... Um, I'll, I'll drink it on Saturday. I think I'll finish. I've got a little bit of rum left. I've got probably about... 15% of the bottle left or something, so I'll drink that on Saturday as well. Playing a game after the stream. Um, I'm not sure, actually, tonight. Probably not, um, but I might code for a bit longer than normal. Um, I've been enjoying doing the coding a bit more at the moment, and the only other game I'd really want to... Well, I say really want to play, that I would play, would probably be Last of Us 2, and I'm, I'm getting kind of pissed off with that at the moment. Um but yeah, whatever. All right, so so we need to generate these into, or we need to move these, sorry, into um, into the other file. So I think I'm probably going to find a way to do this um, smartly instead of kind of manually doing this uh, one map at a time. So let's have a think about this. So if I replace all semicolons with forward slashes, that should sort out those. And then basically I need these values here to match these here. So actually, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for data low uh, and I'm going to replace that with data underscore low colon. I'm just going to set those things there. Uh, and then I need to look for these high things. So uh, if I use Rob expressions here, um, if I go uh, any character um, followed by data high and replace that with Oh, did that actually do it? I don't think it did, did it? Go. There we go. Right, so that creates that section. And now I need to add the end on here as well. So actually, I can probably do this by grabbing the end pieces of another bit. All right, this this might work. Okay, so that gives me all the maps with the right stuff in between them and a label at the beginning of each one. Okay, so this is 
So it's 12 maps in a row. Okay, so let's take that out. Let's move this over here now. Um, let's just spam that all the way down there. Let's put this here for now. All right. In fact, I'll just get rid of this because it's all committed anyway. So. Okay, right. So now we need to build up 12 imports. Um, all exactly the same same plan as this. Um, so what this is going to be, we're going to put um, the value like this. So I'm going to keep that the same, but then that's going to be in there. And the next one in the list will be the, the end. So this is X1, Y1. Okay. And then at the end, I need to just create a new one. So this would be X4, uh, X0. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to save as much time as possible. So I'm not spending all of it doing uh, this bit. There we go. Right. So then I need 12 maps. So, uh, Two, three, hang on, how many is in a row in this? Three, four. So we've got four maps and then three rows. Okay, so let's do it four at a time. Okay, so this is basically X like so. And this is the Y. Uh, this is why I definitely need to make this done by a script because this is painful. Oh God. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I wonder why the YouTube algorithm never picks this tune up. Interesting. I got um, a, a, um, monetization block on one of my videos. Uh, it's one of the Let's Make It games. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but um, it said that this wasn't suitable for advertisers. I don't know why. I I uh, appealed it and they they reinstated it. Um, but yeah, strange. Okay, so these are going to match. Those over there. This is so painful. It's marked for kids. No, I did not know that actually. I I will. I will have a look at that. When I have a break, I'll have a quick look at that because that definitely shouldn't be on. Um, as soon as I spend half of the channel going, fuck, 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 it probably shouldn't be on. <laughs> right, so these are basically warm ahead. But yeah, I, I'll take a look at that because that's definitely not right. Thank you for telling me that. Nobody's mentioned that before, so it's good to know. <laughs> I think everything is supposed to now has to be ready. Uh, yeah, but if you can't no add notification on it, that's kind of, that's not ideal. Okay, so that should be every map now. So let's just give that a quick try, make sure that works. Uh, I don't know which map we load first, actually. So let's have a, let's have a quick look which map we load first. We load map one, which would be this one. So we should see this screen if everything has gone right. Cool, we do. Probably going to turn this multiplexer stuff off now. I mean, it's I'll, I'll turn it back on when we need it. It's pointless having these around all the time. Um, so let's quickly do that.
uh, multiplex in there, so it's probably going to be in that somewhere. Um, where did I put that? Oh, that's the problem. The sprites is probably where I put it. Zero to mock draw, color. Okay, color should be wrong. Zero, don't draw. Somewhere in here, I'm going to be doing some initialization, I guess. So, multiplexer, sort and start. Right? Yeah, Where's it getting those values from? There must be a sign in here somewhere. That might turn off anyway. Let's, let's try that. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Let's get rid of those dots at the top. So one thing we learned from Proton um, the other day is that those dots are a Vic bug, uh, and they're caused by um, basically changing the background color. Even if you change it to the same color, so what you're seeing there is. Uh, the background being changed to black, even though it's already black. Uh, so this happens in our game loop here. Um, we have these debug borders, which increment the border color. Um, and then at the very end, it sets black. But the problem is, is even though even though the debug is turned off and the border color isn't changing, setting it to black will still cause a dot on the screen. So by turning those off, we get rid of the dots at the top. Yeah, and it does indeed. So one of the things um, we're going to have to do with this is um, we're, we're going to have to code each screen individually um, for unique stuff. So this has got like a star field that moves across. Also, I noticed that on, on the map version that I've got, it looks like this is here, but it should probably be over here, I think. So it might have to do some slight uh, map adjustments to get this to work properly um but this is this is fine this will this will do for now um but so for instance on this this screen you can't go up here uh, but there's a star field moving very quickly across here and there's a giant um character on here so um that will be this screen will be when you enter this screen there'll be a piece of code that gets run what we're going to have is for every screen there's going to be um a jump address that you can go to um, there'll be a basic jump address that just has an RTS and it just immediately return. Um, but there will also be some code that's specific to each um, uh, specific to each uh, screen, and this will be one of them. So we'll use the uh, oh giant moth just flew in my room. Oh, you little shit! All right, there's a moth fl flicking around on my screen now. Oh, God damn it! Not quick enough. Cover the wine, yeah, that's the most important thing. I don't want a moth in it. Um, yeah, so so on this screen we'll use um similar to the rain effect that I did um a while back, we'll use a similar method to that to draw very fast moving um fast moving star field on there and then we'll we'll use um some of the sprites to draw a huge sprite here the other great thing about using cartridges is we can have more than 256 sprites so as long as as long as no more than 256 are used on a screen well less than that because the characters are probably about 192 um then we can have as many as we want as many as will fit into the cartridge so that's what we're going to do there we're, we're just going to load in something from the cartridge uh, into the cartridge bank for the sprites. There'll be a set of sprites that are the same uh, all the time. So, for instance, one of the things is on on the first screen. So, on this screen here, let's see if we can load that one actually. So, this would be three, four. So, let's load screen four. Um, uh, there's a huge effect that happens as you spawn, um, and that can be done with sprites and some multiplexing uh, for definite. Um, and that would just be loaded in through the um, 
it's so not loaded. There we go. Loads has been loaded in through the cartridge store. I really want to make use of the cartridge banking as much as possible because uh, it is pretty quick. So uh, these will also be sprites as well. So there's a few characters saved there. But um, yeah, so on this screen, when you spawn, it starts with a huge kind of animation that happens there. So we're going to try and re recreate that as well uh, using sprites. But um, it should be possible, I think. Okay, so let's uh, let's start setting up um, some stuff in the map loader. So, so first of all, in the map loader, we're going to need a list. Um, uh, this is kind of map connections, almost I'll call it. I think that's a good enough name for it. Uh, this is just going to be basically uh, a list which has um, for every screen four bytes, and each byte is going to point to north, south, east, and west. So. Do the same here actually we'll call them up down left right we'll do it that way um, and so each screen will will then detail what the next screen is going to be so let's put those in there so let's go through them slowly so um so basically we're always going to look at up and down left and right so up is minus one uh, because it's a non-existent screen uh down will be four so minus one comma four and this will follow a pretty easy to to understand pattern um left is minus one and right is right is one so this is screen one so that's that's the the order of uh screens for um for screen number one so then for the next screen um up is obviously minus one again uh, down will be five because it's across from this one. Uh, left will be zero, and right will be two. So you'll see these numbers will increment, these numbers will increment as we go along. Uh, again, this will be exported by the map um, eventually, uh, but for now it's just going to be done like this. Minus one at the end because there's no screen at that point, and there we go, we're at the end here. So let's do the next row. So now the up actually does have something in it so up will be like so and down will be the next row and left and right will stay the same but plus one uh plus four sorry so this will be four five six this will be four five sorry five six seven um And then on this row, uh, we've moved down a row. So move these down a row. Uh, there is no, no more rows after this. So minus one on all of these. Um, these stay the same, but plus four. So eight, nine, ten, nine, ten. Uh, there we go. Right. So this is our this is our map connection. So this is just if you go to the edge of a screen, um, which screen to load in next. So we're going to use that in a second to actually load the correct screen in um, using this load map routine, uh, and then we can start scrolling in. So the load map routine actually at the moment has two things in it. It has the map loader, and then it has this uh, this test routine which copies the entire map. So let's call this uh, draw entire map. Uh, and move that code into here. So obviously we need this just once. Um, we need it once to actually draw um, uh, to actually draw the the initial screen because the initial screen doesn't scroll in. The initial screen just appears. So I'm also going to remove the the unrolled loop from this because it's a bit of a waste to to unroll the loop like this uh, for something that's just going to happen once and is not uh, time critical. So I'm going to change this instead to uh, a loop like so, um, which we're doing 24 rows. So if we split that into four, that's six rows at a time, which is 240 characters. So if I just do it like this, then I can actually load. Oops. I like to put these zeros in just 
for for symmetry and and so you know that there's more to come if you like um, And there we go. That, that's doing the same thing, but it's not on roll. So it's going to be a tiny bit slower, but it's not going to be that much slower. Um, it's, it's going to be OK uh, for what we need it for. Anyway, it's going to be absolutely fine. OK, so let's give that a test here. So we, we're going to load the map here. Let's get rid of the debug. Um, did we actually load the map anywhere else? So we do have a map uh, thing up here. I'm going to get rid of this and actually change it for this instead um, so what we'll do is we'll load the accumulator with the value that we want get rid of that uh, we'll call the load map and then we have to do uh, draw entire map okay cool so this should in theory uh, draw our map uh, exactly as we had it before but now it's uh, Oh, what have I done? I've done something wrong there. You can see I've put a one minus instead of a minus one. Okay. It's kind of silly. Uh, also, that shouldn't be one minus, it should be 10. 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, 11. Minus one. Yeah, minus one. Number, number, number. Okay, that's, that's fine. I'm just going to put some spaces in there. I like these numbers to kind of line up. It annoys me that they're not lining up, so. No, I'm not lining up now. Okay, minus one, minus one. Yep, that should be fine. Right, let's catch up on chat a little bit. I'm sure I've missed stuff. Um, today I discovered oh, that if you use self mod in 16 bit systems, well, you can use that as a placeholder as well in on an eight bit system. There's no reason. There's no reason to use anything. Um, so if you've got a if you've got a self mod location like this, I use beef just because that's what I'm used to. That's that's what I see. But you can put anything in here. It really doesn't matter as long as it's more than as long as it's more than two characters. As long as it's three or more, you can put whatever you want in here. So you could have a. that's perfectly valid because what will happen is this will just actually use these values here. It will discard all of these here. So you can put whatever you want in there um, as long as it's more than three. So it doesn't use zero page addressing, uh, but internally it will just use these. It will just discard everything above the 16 bits and, and use them. So um, yeah, I use beef. It's just what I've got used to using. It's uh, for me, whenever I see that, I immediately know that that is going to be, um a self-mod thing i've yet to write a program that actually uses the address beef directly like that so i mean it's, if you do it long enough i guess it's going to happen at one point but um so far no commodore uses dead beef on the amiga yeah, that's a good one as well i guess on the on the 16-bit systems you have to have you have to have at least well i don't know i don't know how the addressing works in the um I don't know how the addressing works, uh, but you, you probably have to use a certain number of characters. Like you have to use three characters at least. Um, okay. Did that actually work? Yep. Yeah, it looks, looks like it did. And now we're not getting that weird flash as it kind of draws the wrong map. It's drawing the correct map now and it's drawing it in one go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so these will get removed. These will become sprites. So this screen is going to have a couple of sprites on it. Um, these two here, there's a, there's a power up that's going to appear in here, but all power ups are going to be sprites. A uh, shootable objects are going to remain, um, part of the background like this, um, cause there's no, there's no real need for them to be sprites. Um, even when they explode, the particles are characters. So. You're not getting a chunk taken out of the corner. Yeah, that that was because I, um, in my data, I had a, an erroneous uh, high bite somewhere. Um, but let's get the screen switching working. So we'll start just by doing a, a, a full screen switch. We won't do any scroll. We'll just make sure that we can move between the right screens. Um, and then once that's working, we can start doing the full scroll. So uh, to do that, let me close some of these down. I've got far too many windows open now. 
Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. Uh, don't need that. Okay, and over here, uh, don't need the macros, and I'll leave everything else. All right. Uh, so in the player code, this is going to be so same as we do on um, our pick and mix game, same as we do on the Game Boy game. Basically, whenever you move left and right, there's a check um, to see if you can you can move in that direction or not. Um, now, actually, no, we don't do it that way. We do it at the end. Sorry, I make a mistake. We do it down here. So this is where the multiplexer data is updated. So all I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to check. Um, is the player in a position where he needs to um, move to another screen? So let's do check screen edges. Uh, we'll start with we'll start with left and right. So. Um, so we're going to load the upper byte of player X first. So let's do let's do uh, left. Uh, so if that's so let's put these in here as well. Do it one section at a time. It should quite easy. Oh, Pink Panther. <laughs> okay. So if this value is uh, non-zero, then that means we're over the left, uh, over the right-hand side of the screen because the ninth bit of the sprite is set. So we can we can basically safely ignore the rest of the routine here. If it is zero, however, we then need to check the next byte, um, so the lower eight bits. <laughs> oh dear! Is that another? Was that another bot? Was what did you what you removed you banned and then removed the man? So so weird. I don't I don't understand what people get out. Well, I guess some people are some people are desperate. And some people will pay for to these things. It says on my screen you removed the ban. It says you banned and then removed the ban. Yeah, it's it is it's so stupid. It's I don't understand it at all. Account might have been deleted. Oh uh, yeah, maybe it's on an auto creation thing. Yeah, you should have seen the one I got also a coder when um some Russian bot decided to make six hundred accounts and, and basically uh what was it? Were they follows? I think they were follows, weren't they? Um, probably more than that, actually. It was probably about a thousand or so. That's why my follower count is so high. Um, uh, but yeah, it was it was crazy. It basically just spammed the chat and the alert box for like half an hour. I, I actually, because I'd never had it happen before, I didn't know what to do about it. That's why that's why I got mods now. So. Um, It's interesting now it says it's removed the ban though. That's that's another one. All right, so let's do this. Um Okay, so we're moving to the left. So we need to check the left hand side of the screen and we need to make sure that the the um the the player character is at a certain point over there. So we'll do the same thing that we did on pick and mix. We'll we'll have the character half off the screen. We can adjust this value later, but for now we'll, we'll move it half off the screen. In fact, let's add it as a constant in here. So um, let's do screen edges. So uh, screen edge left, and that will be, so 24 is the, 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 the start of the border. So we'll make it 12 for that edge. Uh, so we'll compare with screen edge left. And if it is more than that, so if the carry flag is set, then we jump to not left. Otherwise, we can load a value. So we're going to load a, a value here, which is going to be the left value. So this is we're going to go up zero, down two, left 
sorry, up zero, down one, left two. So we're going to load accumulator with two and jump to subroutine map loader next screen. Okay, so and then in map loader, next screen is going to be what actually calculates whether we need to jump to the next screen or not. So we put that below that section. We set format. Yeah, let's do it right at the bottom here. Next screen. Okay. So what this is going to do, <coughs> this is going to check, first of all, if we can move to another screen. Um, so also here we do need to add... Uh, we need to store the accumulator in current screen. So when we load a map, we actually store the current screen that we're on. So then ne what next screen needs to do, first of all, we need to save that value that's in the accumulator somewhere. Um, so actually I'm going to store it in, do we have any gtemp stuff we do? store that in gtemp1. Again, the gtemps are variables that will only ever be used inside this function. Um, and their value should not be reliant on anything uh, after. So if I did a jump to subroutine here and then tried to load that value, I shouldn't do that because I don't know what's going to happen in this. So it should only be used in a section of code and, and never used beyond that. So, um, Okay, so we're going to store the value that we're passing in. So the value that we're passing in is the direction. Uh, but before we get to that, what we need to do is we need to load the current screen in and multiply this by four. So we're going to shift this to the right uh, twice. That's going to multiply this value by four. Um, now I can uh, add uh, the contents of gtemp. And so now this gives us a, a, an index into this um, this connections list here. So now I can, uh, oh, that wasn't the very last, oh, because this, this bit probably doesn't need to be here anymore. So I'm going to cancel that out. This is the old map draw routine. Just going to comment it out for now. I can probably delete it though, but I'll comment it out for now. Um, so transfer that into the X register and now I can load map connections uh, comma X. So this is limiting us at the moment to 64 maps. Now, I think there is between 50 and 60, so that is kind of okay. If I need to change this and make it a 16-bit value, that's fine as well. We can we can do that at a later date. That's, that's not going to be a difficult thing to change. Um, but for now, this is uh, just using a simple index lookup is fine. If we need to change it to 16-bit, we can just turn this into a self-mod or something. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, I have to shift to the left. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Mad Beagle. See, he told you my left and right's are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> my, my left and right is, is actually really, really bad. Um, right. In fact, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, I'll be back in two minutes, guys, um, and we'll continue on this. I'm, I'm kind of feeling it tonight. I'm feeling the code tonight, which is good. So I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Be right back. Right, here I am. Oh, put my headphone in so I can hear stuff. Why can't I see my alert window? Oh, because this is covered up. Let's move that there. Hey, Red Fox, welcome to the screen, dude. Um, okay, let's see. We've got... Okay, so we're doing the next screen. So now we know what the map connection is. So. If that map connection is minus, again, this limits us to 128 screens, so we might have to change it if it grows to more than 128, although I don't think it will. Um, then we'll jump to no screen. Which will be here, which is basically just going to exit. In fact, we'll just call it exit, just jump to exit. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to load the new map in. So for now, I'm just going to put a, a temporary thing in. 
um, is it's just going to load the, the next map in. So the value is already in the accumulator, so I just need to call uh, load map and then um, uh, what did I call it? Draw entire map. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. So this is going to flick us into the next map, but this isn't this isn't all we need to do here. We also need to change the position of the character as well, and we'll do that by creating another constant here, which is going to be our right edge. Oh, God damn it! I didn't put the break on, did I? Oh, I did. I left it going. <laughs> Right, I'll stop it there. There we go. <laughs> there is no strat. There is no strat here at all. It's been this has been tested. I did a million races to make sure that this this was uh this was non kind of cheatable, so Okay, that we don't need to do the the position here uh, uh, in here we need to do it on um on this bit here so we do the jump to next screen and this will load in the next screen uh and the, again this is going to be temporary because the the position of the character is going to change over time when we start doing the scrolling but let's just get it working in one direction in all the directions first and then we'll change that later so so here the uh the screen right edge is going to be um let's see so there are 320 pixels across the screen it starts at 24 on the border so that's 344 is where that edge is plus 12 is 356 so that's our right edge there so now what we need to do is we need to load uh the upper byte of screen edge right store that in the upper byte of the player x and take the lower byte and store it in player x plus one so that's kind of it it's kind of simple really um uh actually we should probably do uh hang on if you move to the left yeah, then it should be minus one because you always want to be just one pixel away. Otherwise, the very next line is going to scroll you back again. And there we go. Right. So let's do the same for the right. The right should just basically be a copy of this. Um, we'll change some things in here. Um, and now we're checking for the, the right edge. So to do this we need to do the opposite so if if this upper byte is not set i.e if it's equal to zero then we can't possibly move into the right otherwise we will check the uh, screen edge right um, but again we're just looking at the um the uh the lower bit of this um actually this is kind of not needed because if you did that comparison it would just check against the lower byte anyway but i'm going to put it in just because it's um, more obvious uh, what it's doing there um, otherwise we need to load the next screen so up is zero down is one uh, left is two right is three so we call this three and this is our I think we're, I might make some constants for these as well um, right, let's do that let's I'm not even going to call these anything uh, fancy I'm just going to call them all down left right because they can also be used for joystick controls as well if we want to. Uh, not that we're using them for joystick. Actually, no, they couldn't be used for joystick because up, down, left, right is slightly different. LDA sets flags. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> I know that, and I know you're trolling me there because I've I've taken that into account here. Um, look, look, look at that. I can do that and not have to use a compare instruction. Amazing. That's what a proper language is like. Uh, and because we're going this way, we need to plus one. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much good. Uh, so the comparison here needs to be a bit different. Um, so 
if we are at the screen edge, um, then we then um, this value would be the opposite. So it needs to be that. Okay. So now we can go left and right on screen. So let's let's give that a try. Hopefully, we should see that we can flick to a new screen. Yeah, minus hundred points for trolling. Yeah, exactly. So if I go over here now. Okay, it, it did appear on this screen, but it appeared a little bit later than I wanted it to. Right, so you can see that pause that I was on about. It is it is doing that pause as it as it moves to the new screen. Uh but that will be replaced with um that would be replaced with a scroll animation, so it'll look kind of smooth, but it, it's kind of working now. Uh the position is probably a bit more than it needs to be. Also, we need to remove the particles at this point as well. Yeah kill particles yeah yeah i'm on it i'm on it uh we, we also need to kill bullets as well because you'll see if i if i if i fire in that direction um actually let me do it in uh it's probably not gonna it's gonna be quick enough that it's not gonna happen uh but yeah we do need to kill the particles at that point which is fine um okay so um let's let's just change the the settings on that that scroll here. The screen edge is a bit too far over, so let's move it back down to 344. Uh actually 320 plus 24. Right, let's let's try that. Let's get the let's get the screen edge right and then we'll do the particle killing. If it scrolls, will it scroll the particles and bullets? No, it won't. So all particles and bullets will be removed from the screen, as will all the sprites at that point, um, except for the player sprite. The player sprite will stay there. OK, it's still a bit too far over. So. I forgot to take account of the width of the sprite as well. So yeah, this is 24. Yeah, this is going to be right now. So I should have subtracted the width of the sprite. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. But yeah, so you can see that the particles are cutting holes in the scenery. Um, so we do need to kill the particles when we go in here. So we'll do this in, in here as part of the next screen. So before we load the new map, we'll do subroutine particles kill particles okay, so particles particles where the hell are the particles uh they're here okay so what do we do need to do to kill particles let's just put it here well killing particles is pretty simple actually all we need to do is um go through the the full list of particles um so load X with uh, max particles minus one decrease which if actually we'll go because we may increase this to more particles on some screens. So I'm going to go forward through this um, and instead compare X to uh, max particles. Let's say uh, equal to loop. And basically, we're going to store the value zero in particle MSB because if particle MSB is zero, then that particle should not be drawn. So it's as simple as that, and that should kill particles as we move between the screens. It should be relatively quick. It's not going to be. Um, it's not going to be too slow. Okay, so move over this side. Oh, it's it's ah. I don't know why that's done. It's. Uh, Because uh, we kill the particles there and we should be loading the map here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to push and pull here. No reason to use anything else. It's, it's a couple of cycles. The, the whole map load is, is much more than um, you know, magnitudes of thousands of times slower than pushing and pulling from the stack. So you should be fine doing it this way. There we go. 
And considering this is loading these um, these screens from uh, cartridge, this is this is pretty neat. I'm going to show it in the debugger in a minute, so you can see what's going on with the font. Oh, I, I noticed a particle survived somehow. Then, um, not entirely sure why. Uh, probably because of the position of that in the game loop. So let's have a look at the game loop. We clear particles, update particles, player control happens here. Okay, so it should be within the player control stuff. Um, it's probably to do with interrupts. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. I can look at that at a later date. I, what, I'm, what I'm interested in here is getting the... Um, getting the rest of the directions done uh thanks for the host pro seven appreciate it dude all right let's load this in the debugger and i can show you how the fonts working uh and you'll get a much better of idea what i'm actually doing when when these fonts load okay so let's go to uh this screen so you can actually see uh the font so this is our current font obviously it contains the logo um let's events into the game so you can see it's drawn the fonts for uh this screen um up here and watch what happens when i go into the next screen it adds fonts for the for the the next screen in, into that position uh, and alternates between them like so now i don't know how many characters are being used on each of these screens so i don't know how efficient this is um this is something I'm going to have to look at uh, at some point. I know for a fact that there are lots of reused characters in here. So things like these edge borders, things like these can be stored in this lower half of the character set here uh, and reused uh, to save on. Because what, what happens at the moment is when you move to this screen and it draws the new characters in the font, it draws them regardless if they existed in the last one or not. So... Um, some of these are going to be um some some of these are going to be um uh, shared if you like across screens and there's also going to be characters that are not going to be um uh, so these are not going to be characters these are going to be sprites um likewise in here um i think this ball here is probably going to be a sprite there's a good chance this will be a sprite as well um, and things like these edge borders here, they, these are all going to be reusable characters because they're on every single screen. Still getting glitches over here. So let's... Uh... Uh, okay, so we might have to look at that in, in a minute. So... Uh, I'm trying to figure out here. Uh, the middle screen pits is because the back end is off the screen. Ah, yes, that's yes. All right, yeah, because um, okay, yeah. Okay, that's good. But they're and um, oh, and these the ones that are deleting here are because these pixels are going off the screen here, and ending up here. So that that's something I'm going to address uh, uh, soon. So um, I I already know about this. And I know this is an issue. Um, basically, what's happening is when the particles go off, there's no check to see if they've reached the, the edge screen boundaries. So they do appear on the other side of the screen. Uh, it's the same with the bullets as well. You'll see if I shoot this way. Um, uh, which I can't seem to do in this the mode. If I do it in um, if I do it in the normal, so that's fine. That's 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 good. That means that the um, that means that the uh, the the system, the the kill particle system is working about as well as as expected. Um, so yeah, you'll see now if I shoot in this direction, actually you don't see them. Um, let me find a screen where you might see them. I can't go down, can I? Can I go? Oh, I can do it from here. There we go. So if I, oh, it's not doing it, but you you can get the the bullets to loop. So if this if this wasn't here, they would loop uh, around the other side of the screen. Uh, 
let's try and find that. It's going to be the same here as well, isn't it? You can see we can go all the way across. Um, I think I think one of these up here should tell you which room you're in. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but what should happen if I reach the edge where we can't go any further is it just won't move to another screen. I'll just end up wrapping the sprite around. So like here, there's no screen to go. So I just wrap around to the other side and then I'm going to have some weird glitches as I try and Actually, it's not because it's it's actually set in the the other side anyway. So, cool. All right. Um, okay. So, with that in mind, now we can do the up and down. So, let's get those in place. So, the up and down, basically the same as these things, but now uh, they're a slight bit simpler because we don't need to check the upper byte here. So, um, let's do up. So we don't need to check uh, the up byte because there is no upper byte on the Y. We're just going to use this value here. Um, and we're going to compare against the screen edge top and the screen edge bottom. So, oops. Okay, so the screen edge top, um, the border starts at 50. Um, and the sprite is 21 high. So we want the top to be around about 40, I would say. Um, let's let's make it let's make it forty two, um, and then the bottom is uh, so the screen is two hundred high, the border is fifty at the top, so the bottom edge is at two fifty. Um, when the sprite is touching the bottom edge, the sprite is twenty one high. That means it's two two nine. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, City Zen. Very much appreciated. Thank you for the sub there. Um, very much appreciated. Four months, awesome. How you doing, dude? Um, okay, so the, the bottom of the screen when the sprite is touching it is 250, but the sprite is 21 high, so um, the sprite will actually be at position 229. So we'll make the off screen eight pixels past that, so that will be uh, two, three, seven. Let's call it 238 to round it to a nice number. Um, and that gives us our top and bottom. Right, so now we can start using this. So we're going to compare. We don't need to use the, the lower thing. We can just compare to the top now. So we're going to compare to the top edge. Uh, and if we're more than the top edge, then we know we're not moving up. So we can use not, not up. However, if we are at the top edge, then we need to use zero because zero is our thing. Let's change these to... Um, these constants as soon as I put them in here and let's actually use them um, and again we don't need to set the uh, upper byte we only need to set the the uh, the Y register and there's only one byte that represents the Y register at least in, in terms of what we actually need to change um, and so we don't we also don't need this uh, and this will be screen edge bottom, uh, and this will be minus one. Um, so very easy for the for the up and the down will be similarly easy as well. So changes to not down, changes to down. We're actually, not actually using these up, down, left, right. There, we're only using the not up, not down. Yeah, you know. but I, I like to keep them in there anyway because it just you can see the blocks of code nice and easy then. Uh, so we're going to reverse this condition here because now we're checking the screen edge bottom. Um, we're going to reverse this to down and we're going to change this to screen edge top and we're going to plus one so it appears on the side and that should be enough for us to um, move between all the screens that we've exported now so I can come in here I should be able to go down here. We've got no collision in at the moment, but I should be able to go down here. Should be able to go back up again. Okay, so so one thing I do notice is that it's using the, the screen edge where the hood is, and it shouldn't be doing that. It should be using it about here. We also should probably put a split in here so that this doesn't get displayed at this point as well. Um, the easiest way to do that would probably be um, to invert the characters here. 
and use it. Well, no, because you still need a background color. Uh, no, I think it's I think it's probably fine as it is. And we'll, what I'll do is I'll at some point I'll add a split in so that you actually disappear behind uh, the hood here. But for now, I'm just going to advance the the screen edge top by eight so that that um, actually happens a little bit sooner. Oh my god, this is a, a very mellow stairway to heaven. Okay, cool. So actually there is a screen down here as well, so because there's no collision, we should be able to go straight into it. There you go. Yeah, so there are some issues because the particles are not going off the screen in the right places. Um you know, I can create some kind of odd situations, uh, but this is this is fine. We'll we'll add that stuff in soon. Um, oh, this this screen definitely needs some adjustment. I've not made enough space really to get up here, but um, this was really just a kind of test to make sure we could do this. I don't care too much if the screens are working properly or not. Um, this is i'm going to leave this down to andy to actually do the um andy roberts thalamus to do the uh, work on he's he's the one that's provided these screenshots um these these maps um so i'll get him to do that what i am going to do um actually i can't because of the stupid way i did the okay it's fine <clears throat> i i can get this working with the screens that i've got um, because at the moment there's no collision. So this is another good reason not to have collision in yet. So I can test the, the method. <clears throat> okay. So next job is to take a look at, um, scrolling these in rather than just making them appear. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to forego some of this stuff here. Basically it's everything in this section. Um, so this this whole section, if you're in the scroll mode, is not going to get not going to get used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, in the map loader. I'm going to create a, a thing here called um, scrolling map, uh, and this is going to be just a boolean value. So I'm just going to put byte zero in it for now. Um, when the map is loaded, um, this will be uh, well, not when the map is loaded, but when um, well, yeah, it is. It's after the map is loaded, but I'm not going to put it in the load map routine. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to store zero one into. Um, actually, no. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to store ff in here. So ff means nothing is happening. Otherwise, I'm going to store this value into the map scroll. Um, and I'm not going to do that in here either. I'm going to do that in our routine in here because this is what decides which direction we're going in. The, the actual loader has no idea what's happening here. So I'm going to store that at, um, uh, what did I call it again? Map loader. Actually, we can do it in the next screen. We can definitely do it in the next screen um, because we've got this value in gtemp1 here already. So, so when the map is loaded, then I'm going to uh, load the accumulator Oh no, I can't rely on gtemp1 here. Uh... Okay, I will create another value in zero page for this. So, uh... actually, no, I didn't even create it in zero page. I'll create it here. Okay, so, um... so I'm going to call this screen direction. This is going to have a byte zero in it. Uh, and I'm going to store that here like so. And then here I can load screen direction uh, and store that at um, scroll. Actually, I could just put it in scrolling map, can't I? That would make the most. Yeah, let's just put it scrolling map, scrolling map. And then I don't have to do anything here, right? So it's already in scrolling map now. So. So in the game loop, what I'm going to do now is at this point, I'm going to check. I'm going to check if um, map loader scrolling map 
if that's minus, uh, then normal um, normal frame, which is this stuff. So this is our normal frame. This is this is the stuff we do normally from frame to frame. Um, I'll call this frame exit. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, scroll frame. Scroll frame is literally just going to call um, map loader scroll map, uh, and then it's going to jump to frame exit. So this is where the magic is going to happen in scroll map here. So just going to be here. So what does scroll map need to do? Scroll map needs to shift the map in a particular direction based on whether or not we're going up, down, left, or right, and then fill in the remaining edge pieces with um, with the map that we've we've loaded into memory. So we need two things here. We need a scrolling map, uh, and then we need a counter here, a scroll counter. So whenever you scroll the map, the scroll counter is going to start at zero. So we need to make sure we reset that to zero in here. Uh, so we'll do that at the end here. So we'll just then when you come to scroll map, based on which direction we're going, we're going to do various things. So um, this is the first thing we need to do. First of all, we need to load um, our scroll. Um, I forgot what I called it now. Scrolling map. Actually, let's call this scrolling map direction because it makes a bit more sense then. And the way I'm going to do this is going to be really, really sneaky. So I, I'm going to align this to uh, one zero. And then I'm going to have some values in here. So scroll up. Let's just do it in lowercase. Like so. Down, left. And then I'm going to double this value by shifting it to the left. Uh, and then And I'm going to add the lower byte of the, the scroll table to this. So what this is going to do, this is going to give us the value of zero and whatever this address is, uh, two, four, or six. So we're going to have some values here that we can jump to. Um, and then I'm going to store that our uh, self mod jump um, plus one because it's the lower byte and then this is our self mod jump and this is going to have an indirect jump address in here which is basically going to point to the beginning of this table here and what will happen is based on which direction we're moving it will pick one of these routines uh, and it will jump to that so at the moment this is just point to scroll up um, but if this value becomes two then it's going to point to scroll down if it points to four, it's going to be scroll left and, and so on. So this is using a jump table to, to basically save having to do lots and lots of comparisons to different values. And then we're going to have the routines here. So let's do one routine at a time. So let's um, think about these. So these could probably be unrolled, but I don't think there's much point in, in unrolling these um, because the speed is not going to be that bad, I don't think, because we're not scrolling color ramp. Um, we are just shifting characters across the screen. You can you can shift an entire screen of characters in one frame, not a problem. Uh, 
the only thing we might have to do in these routines is wait for a particular line to happen, which um, we can do. We, we can definitely do. So the only problem I can think of uh, with this system is that if there's music playing, when we hit that screen edge and that pause happens, the interrupts get disabled at that point. So, well, they don't get disabled. Well, actually, they do at the moment because of the way the cart works. But they can be re-enabled. The reason they get disabled at the moment is because the kernel banks in. So when the kernel banks in, that changes a little bit how the interrupts work. And we need to make sure that um, we still have a music routine that will run while all this is happening. Not a problem. It's fairly fairly simple for us to do. But I, again, I'm going to worry about that when we put the music in. Or I'm going to smooth those things out later. But for now, let's just do the routine. So let's um, have a look at scrolling to the right. So. When I say scrolling to the right, what I mean here is we've gone off the screen to the right. This doesn't necessarily mean the screen's actually going to scroll to the left, but we've gone off the screen to the right. So I'm going to do this on a row by row basis. So I am going to unroll some of it, uh, but I'm not going to unroll the whole thing. There's no point. So I'm going to do row um, zero, rows less than 24, because we only need to do 24 rows, row plus plus. So what do I need to do here? Okay, so I need to take the value, each value on the screen and move it across by one. Um, and I need to do that. Um, I have to start at, at, at zero basically and work my way across. There's no way I can't do this loop back. It has to go this way. So then I'm taking screen RAM. So screen RAM actually starts at C028 because the top part is the, is the hood. So the top line is the hood. Uh, and I need to add one because I'm taking the character that's just ahead of it and moving it to what to just before it. So I'm going to take that character. Oops. And I'm going to store it at from plus one and store it to plus zero. And that's going to move that entire row across. Um, as long as I do this. Um, Now, that's only going to move everything except the very, very last row. And it's the very last the very last column uh, that needs to be something different. So we're storing the new, the, the new column at C028 plus 27, uh, which is the very far side of the, the screen. But the value that we need to put in here is coming from 7800 um, plus... Actually, this, this is going to be tricky. So... I'm just thinking about one row here. So let's just think about one row. Let's ignore the fact it's in a loop because I do need to add the plus R's in here. Um, this value needs to increment as we go along. So the value that it's grabbing from here is actually based on um, this value. So I'm going to load the Y register with this. So this is going to be the value that's in scroll counter. So we need to load the value from Seven eight hundred plus whatever R R is. In fact, here it's just going to be zero for now, uh, comma Y, um, and that makes sure that as we advance the counter along, that the new column it moves in is a, a new column that's moved. Otherwise, we'd have to scroll the the uh, the 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 new memory in as well, and we don't want to do that. We would just want to copy one line at a time. In. Don't want to have to scroll two screens. Just scroll one screen. So that's what this is doing. So now we can add the, the plus R times 28, which is going to give us uh, each row. So I'll do that here, and that will be here as well, and that will be here. Okay, so this should scroll everything to the right by one, by one character. And then it doesn't actually do anything with the scroll counter. So what we need to do here when we finish is we need to increase the scroll counter. Um, and then we need to compare that to see if, have we scrolled everything? If we scrolled everything, then the scroll counter will have reached 28 because we'll have scrolled every single column as we go along. Um, if that's not equal to 28, we can just go to the exit, which will be here. Um, otherwise, if it uh, and, and the uh, store y at scroll counter, otherwise we've finished scrolling. So we can do um, ff and store that at, what was it again? Scrolling map direction, there we go. Okay, so this is gonna allow us to scroll to the right, uh, one frame, um, uh, one character column per frame. So that means the entire, the entire thing will happen in about a second. Uh, it's gonna take 40 frames for it to go across and it's about, I think it was about 11 frames we, we saw um, 
for the initial pause. So there'll be an initial pause of 11 frames, then there'll be a 40 frame animation as the whole screen moves across. So let's give that a try. Hopefully this should work. Um, we'll also get an idea of just how much memory that, that chunk takes up. It shouldn't be too bad because uh, we're only unrolling rows and not, not columns here. Uh, okay, map loader, scrolling map direction I need. So that is... Oops. Oh no, scroll map direction. Okay, so let's have a look at how much room that has taken up. So our map loader is here, which is part of the game code. So currently our game code is taking up about eight kilobytes. I am fairly certain that this is going to be some of the biggest chunks of code because there's lots of unrolled loops in here. Um, and there's lots of kind of preparation tables and things in here. So I'm fairly certain this is going to be the biggest bulk of our code. But because we're loading in from, uh, we're loading in screens one at a time um, from cartridge, we've got a lot of room. We, we've got a lot of room to mess around with. The, the, the screen, the most that the screens are ever going to take up is the current screen that it's on. Um, the, uh, was it the, the screen font character used and the screen copy. So the most the screens are ever going to take up in memory at any one time is going to be around about four kilobytes, which is quite small considering how much we're going to be putting into this. Um, and in, especially considering the font set is huge as well. It also means that the the, the code from um, 8,000 to, uh, to C1000 can never be used while the screen is scrolling. So that would probably be a perfect place to put um, screen specific coding so when the screen is loaded there'll be a jump table which says okay uh we're on this screen so you need to jump to the code that runs just this screen stuff and that will be in there as well so <clears throat> okay let's give that a try hopefully that works let's have a look hey it's Alamuse. welcome to the stream dude i put the um i i, I did a little kind of tweak of the stuff you sent me just to uh test some stuff out Hopefully it's going to work all right. Let's take a look now. So, so this should scroll to the right with a bit of luck. Okay, no, it didn't. It did something really weird here. Um, something happened, but it didn't didn't replace the screen. So let's have a look why. Let's have a look. Um, okay, so this is the routine that should have been called. So let's just put a breakpoint in here. Just make sure we're actually calling that routine. Just make sure that that's fine. I think we are because... Um, <clears throat> why is that not loaded? No, okay. <clears throat> I've also added um, Easy Flash support today as well, Thalamus. So... Um, because I couldn't test on the debugger with Gmod or um, Gmod or Magic Desk. I couldn't test on the debugger with those when they were uh, more than 128 kilobytes in size. So now I'm using a 512 kilobyte Easy Flash, uh, and I can switch between them really easy. All I have to do is change this here. Uh, so let's put that in there actually. So these are the formats that I can support at the moment: uh, D64, Magic Desk, Gmod, Easy Flash. Disk is not going to work because I'm using cartridge trickery to do uh, some of this stuff. Um, which I'll, uh, when I get this work and I'll show you exactly what, how it's working with the uh, fonts, it's kind of it's kind of neat to be honest. Um, okay, a bit of creatures. Okay, it didn't actually trigger that breakpoint at all there, which is interesting. Um, but it did change the font, so it changed the font, but it didn't change the breakpoint. It didn't hit the breakpoint, so let's see what's going on. I think I'm doing something wrong here, so let's move the breakpoint up to here. This tune is such a happy tune. Brings back memories as well. Ah, okay, so it's not even hitting the breakpoint here. Uh, which is worrying me a little bit because it should be in that right point. Uh, maybe it's not doing any of this. Maybe it's map loader scrolling map direction. Okay, scrolling map direction should be getting set. Uh, 
Should we be getting set in here? Store scrolling map direction, yes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay, I need to I need to look at that value in the in the debugger and see what's going on because it doesn't look like that value is being um, changed at all. So let's check on this. So um, oh, I am really feeling the code today. I'm 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 enjoying it. I think it's because of the last night stream, the late night stream is kind of spurred me on a little bit i don't know why it should have done the opposite right it should have put me to sleep but it hasn't oops okay right so unfortunately my breakpoints aren't working in the debugger so i have to do this kind of manually um but this is the value i'm looking for so 08 b7 so we're looking for this value to change so it should go to ff when i start which it has done and when I move off the screen, it should change to, it has changed, it's changed to three. So that says that we should be scrolling. Um, so have a look at the loop. If it's minus, go to the normal frame. Otherwise, we should get to here. So a breakpoint here should be happening when we go off screen. that oh yeah you're right thank you my beagle 10 bonus well 50 bonus points there because it would have taken me a little bit longer to figure that out thank you very much uh game loop, game loop. as soon as you said it i knew i knew what i'd done immediately thank you bonus points for mad beagle there you're on form tonight mad beagle Why is that not loaded? Oh, so we've got that open. <laughs> okay, so we've hit that. Okay, so it is trying to do something, but I think what it's doing is wrong. Because it's, it's only drawing on that column and it doesn't seem to be shifting anything across properly so let's go and have a look at that so i, th I think the the basics are working um let's stick a breakpoint in here make sure we're getting to here i think we are getting to that point i've probably just done something it's so easy to miss those hashes as well or to add them where you shouldn't add them uh, and you can spend you can spend a lot of time um, just staring at something and not notice it. So yeah, very good catch there. Okay, so it's definitely getting into this routine. Of course it is because it's hitting that breakpoint in here. I shouldn't have needed to do that. It's kind of silly, really. Um, okay, fine. So it's getting into here. Let's have a look. So we are going through the screen. We are doing one column at a time. Oh, there we go. There's a the problem. I think that's probably all right there. So, I mean, this is one of those things that the game would work perfectly fine without, but. I think it just adds a whole extra level to be able to do this. Um, and that worked perfectly. So it was a bit slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it twice per frame um, and see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to go into, where was it? It's probably not going to make a huge difference because it, it, it's probably taken about a full uh, full screen to do this anyway, but um, let's give it a try. See what happens.
It's a little bit slow. Um, it looks nice though. It does look nice. Uh, unfortunately, it's always going to scroll that way now, but um, it is a little bit slow though. Um, okay, so can I speed this up any more? Well, yes, I can actually. So the easiest way to speed this up will be not to call it twice, but instead do a do a, do a, a, a two character shift as we move across. So, so instead of doing plus one, we'll do plus two here. And instead of stopping at 27, we'll stop at 26. But it does mean we need to add two extra columns in here. So, um, so this becomes uh, plus one and this becomes 26 and i think that should just scroll count out. yeah and we just need to increase y by two each time that should scroll a bit quicker so scroll at double speed now so the code is partly unrolled i don't want to unroll it too much um at first for such a small as well thing. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Paul Mortlock. Uh, appreciate it, dude. I love that. I love that thing. Yeah, see, that's fine. That's that's great. So yeah, we we could unroll the code further, but if you look, if you look at what's there, um, it's not going to change an awful lot. I mean, it, it's going to basically remove uh, these bits here. It's not going to add a, a, an, awful, an awful lot. Um, and it's going to take a lot of extra memory. Now, I could push that into a cartridge bank and do this completely from cartridge banks, um, which is if an option. If we start running out of room later, we could maybe move this into a cartridge bank. Um, thanks for the follow, NDD. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, but that's looking pretty good. So this is just scrolling right at the moment. So we need to do the same with left. We need to do the same with up and the same with down. Um, but what I am going to do, um, I don't know if I don't know if Thalamus is still around. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how this actually looks in the um, in the debugger because it's it's kind of handy to to for him to understand what's what's going on in the debugger. So. Uh, as soon as he's going to be doing the maps. So if I put it into this mode, uh, ignoring the fact that it's it's going between, um, it, I understand everything. Yeah. So if you watch the font here, so from this point onwards, the font is reserved. I can probably move this into another font if I need to. So we can maybe get up to about here. Um, but you can see the font is only filled up to this point. But then what happens when I move off the screen this way, the font is is added to, and this just keeps cycling around. So every time I every time I load a new screen in, the font will update with new data and so on, and it creates that kind of nice. So it means we can have as many characters as we want. Uh, they'll just be a, a per screen or, or pair per screen pair limit anyway. Um, um, but I like that. I really like the the scroll. I, I think it was definitely worth doing. Um, we could have just gone with straight flick, and it would have probably been an acceptable method. But I I I really like how this looks. Feels good. Um, all right, I'm going to take a, a quick two minute break, guys. I do need to use the bathroom, um, and then when I come back, we'll do the other we'll do the other directions as well. Nice rubbish sleeves it, shut up you. <laughs> All right, back in a minute. Good night, my beagle. And I'm back. Ah, right, okay. Stop the races, uh, stop the spam. There's an awful lot of spam when there is one. I'm considering writing a, a little Twitch extension that will sit just underneath the um underneath the stream where it will have the race controls in it um but i'm just not doing it at the moment have i been i'm all right dd how are you i've um I, i've struggled with the with the lockdown and stuff but these streams keep me sane so it's it's good
the wine helps as well to be fair <laughs> wine helps a lot oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh d long time no see oh my god <laughs> it's just dawned on me who you are <laughs> no one else calls me mitty no one else calls me mitty <laughs> i'm great i am i'm great i've, I've had a, a rough couple of weeks but i'm i'm all right i'm all right i'm, I'm getting through it these streams are helping i've got lots of cool people on here to keep me sane so um now we know well you can call me mitty if you want Agmithin, but it's not going to be quite the same so uh d yeah i used to work with d um a few years ago um she's a really good friend so um it's really good to see her so i need to i need to throw you a follow d if i can find you on here uh there you go. You got to follow from me. No, if you ever, if you ever on when um, I'm raiding someone, I can come and come and give you a raid as well. Uh, you had to come and see me. Thank you very much. It's it's cool to see you. So yeah, I'll call you Bitty. Oh, thank thanks for that. Cheers. One D dish the dirt. <laughs> There's no dirt. There's no dirt. She's a very good friend. Okay, right, let's let's do the scroll left. So the scroll left is basically the same thing, we're just going in the other direction, so definitely we'll be here after it's really cool to see. Uh, I I'm it's been really funny actually. There's a few few people, a uh, few friends that have that have popped in now and again. It's good. I know um Mimi as you call her. I know she she watches now and again. She's always shocked because she's in America and if I'm still still uh streaming at um 5 a.m in the morning she's uh always shocked that i'm still on so uh it's usually the alcohol that keeps me going though so all right so we're gonna go backwards this time so um we need to copy from 25 in hex and we're gonna go backwards and we're copying across the screen this time so uh so as long as that's still positive, we go to here. Otherwise, we need to copy from zero to two. So these are basically swapped around um, here. Um, now, this means that this is the other way around here. So what I need to do is um, I need to take the, the scroll counter. No, actually, I need to take the value of 28 and subtract the scroll counter and put that in y uh, it also means that we'll need to change uh the the values down here um which we'll do in a minute so this means it's going to start at 20 actually this needs to start at this needs to start at 27 actually um so if we subtract the scroll counter from that so it's zero this is going to be 27 so actually no it needs to start at 26 there we go um okay so this is correct this is correct but now these need to be at uh zero zero one and then these both need to decrease here so if y hits zero at this point um i think that's right I, we might need to uh, we might need to change some values here um Hmm. yeah we're gonna to have to think about this a little bit differently okay so to scroll the entire screen across we need to scroll uh exactly 28 columns but we're starting at 26 here so the very last column will be start at zero and then the last column will be 26 and 27 so this would be Scroll count would be at 26, so the Y would be at zero at this point. So actually, we can do the check here. So um, so we compare the Y to zero. Uh, branch is not equal to here. And then we need to kind of, we need to take our scroll counter value. 
add two to it here. Otherwise, we're going to do these things here. So we're not going to do any of the decrease Y stuff here. We are still going to do this, but we're also going to reset this value. So I think that should be fine. Let's give it a try. Hopefully, we should scroll in the other direction now. I love your coding now. What language am I using? This is uh, this is assembly for C64. So this is this is proper old school. Um, this is um, uh, this is like code from the 1980s basically and there we go we've got it working in both directions now uh, but this game is um, a game that was released on the switch uh, last month i think um and the the publishers in the in this uh stream now thalamus is the publisher um i don't think gareth noyce is in although i don't know gareth's um twitter handle but he's the original dev for it um so uh yeah it's it's originally uh, a pc and switch game but um i'm i'm converting it for 30 year old hardware uh, well 30 37 year old hardware so um it's kind of working all right though so far which is, which is nice okay so that's that's left and right seems to be working um I noticed some tiny glitches with the characters up here, but this is just because um, we have a limited amount of characters in the character set, uh, and we need to we need to reduce the amount of doubled up characters, and that will be done by um, by sharing some of these. So you can see on this screen these uh, borders here and these here they're used in pretty much every screen, so those will be shared. Same as these crates, actually, they, they'll probably be shared as well. Um, and that that will that will save these things from happening. So um, it seems really into it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really hard to follow the chat, especially when the races start. So I've got this uh, like little on stream race that appears down there or down there even. Um, and when that starts, people go kind of crazy for it. So uh, well, they they definitely spam the chat with it anyway. Um, yeah, if you if you want my attention, yeah, do a do an exclamation mark. Listen, uh, yeah, see here we go. The race has started, so everybody bets on the race. Um, uh, okay, right, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, okay, so we've done left and right, so we just need to do up and down now. So up and down. Actually, I'm I'm not that convinced. I I think the the position that it leaves you at should be a bit more than those. So I'm going to change. Actually, I'm not going to change those because these the the scroll should actually um, move you to that position during the transition. So for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, and I'll work on that next. So let, let's do the let's do the rest of the up and down, the left and right and stuff. So uh again, okay, so let's do which would be the easier one here. Actually, it really doesn't matter which way we do. So we'll do scroll up first, might as well. All right. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Uh, so scrolling up, um, so we're moving up, so the screen is moving down. Actually, let's do down first because that's the um that's going to be the easiest one of the two. So we're going to load the scroll count in. And that's going to be our Y. And we're still going to do rows. Um, actually, should we do rows or should we do... No, row, rows will be fine, I think. Um, but this time we we do one, uh, two less rows because now we are scrolling... Um, up and down we only need to scroll 22 of the row it was 22 of the 24 rows if we're going to do these two at a time um the inner loop is basically going to be very very similar um uh, except now we're going to do a full set of um rows all the way across so we'll start at 27 we can go backwards so that's absolutely fine um but instead of doing plus zero and plus two here 
um, we're going to use uh, oh no actually plus 28 plus 0 plus 50 so this is going to take rows from the top and move them down so if we're moving down so it needs to actually be the other way so this would be this way like this so we're taking rows from beneath and moving them up um, is that right yes that's right okay so that means when we're finished we need to actually take rows from somewhere slightly different in this area so this is where it does get a little bit trickier now okay so the rows that we need to fill in are going to be are going to advance through this section here so we actually need to um hmm, yeah this is going to be tricky okay let's have a think about this okay i think we need a zero page location for this so let me we have a map map loading stuff in here no okay so let's do map loader here um and this is going to be our map look up and this is going to be a word uh, I miss my chance at the races so often I've automated my bets. <laughs> that makes sense. Just a macro button to do it, yeah. Okay, right. So the reason this is going to be tricky is because now um, this value is not going to be easy to calculate like this um, because this value is um, not based on the row that we're uh, displaying here but it's based on the column um, and the counter so I'm actually going to put the counter in X and I'm going to change this to a Y loop instead um, like so and the reason for that is because every single oh no no this is not true this is not true hang on So we're moving down the screen, so we move things up. So as we move things up, we scroll everything up, and in the bottom two rows. So the bottom two rows need to happen at the end. So these should not be in this loop anymore. These should be outside. I really wish I had the red white. I really do. But never mind, never mind. Uh, okay. So let's have a look at what we should be doing here. I'm just going to put some uh, placeholders in for now. So the row that we're going to grab from is actually going to be based on the scroll counter. So let's just put scroll counter in here. I know this isn't going to work, but I, I, will, I will change this at some point. Um, and this needs to be also done in a loop as well so this would be let's get rid of that one from there uh, oops okay and that would be scroll counter times 28. So this is the bit that we're going to need to calculate. This is the, the bit that we're going to have to work out ahead of time. Um, should be fine. I can use a table to grab those values. So that's not too too much of a problem. Um, so I actually probably don't need this map look. I can probably do it with... Um, I can probably do it with self-mod code. But actually, no, I think I will use zero page because I'm using comma y. And that would be stored at the bottom row. So it's not going to be here. This is going to be on row 23 and 24. So let's do that in uh, in X. So that's 23. Like so. 
Uh, but at the same time, I need to grab scroll counter plus one. And store that here at 18. Okay, but the, the easiest way to do this is obviously not to do it at all like that and to just do a whole block of copy like that. So all I really need to do is change this value here. So if I have a uh, map lookup here, uh, and then I can calculate that value. So if I get rid of, uh, let me go to my table. So let's create a map lookup. So map lookup LSB, MSB, and that will be, actually that will be 20, four not 25 and this will be seven eight hundred oh no that was the wrong okay sorry I just checked my windows over here I've got that should not be on. Don't know why it's playing an old video though. Uh, right, okay. Um, so I've got a lookup table here and I've got the value of the scroll counter in X. So what I can do in that case is I can load map lookup LSB comma X and I can store that out. Map lookup plus one plus two, which is going to fix this to actually point to one of these screen rows here. This will always be the same. So actually, this looks to be fine. So I'm going to change this to the word B for now. So I know it's a lookup. That should be fine. Then I need to increase x, increase x, compare x to the last row, which is 24. Is that right? Hang on. 20. No, it's 22. 24. Uh, not equal. Jump to here. Otherwise, we do the reset, which is this. Scroll exit, scroll counter. Right, okay, I think that's going to work. Let's give it a try. So this is scrolling down now. It's quite a lot of code without... Um, I don't know, I think that should be all right. Why is that not loading? Oh, uh, a tables. Okay, damn it. It's why these tables are really handy to have. Okay, so we're checking for scrolling down. Uh, okay, so it, it did something, but it wasn't quite right. Um, it's kind of missing, it's missing some rows here. That's the problem. Oh, and it's it's missing rows because we're doing the same issue here. We're um, what I really should be doing here is uh, I do fifty at a time, like so, like that. Yeah, let's give that a try. It's going to actually reduce the code a little bit. That's kind of nice. <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> oh, I see your... your... <laughs> Love's great adventure. <laughs> Oh, we put Thomas the Tank Engine in. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. 
I do like some of the some of the things that um that the batching system picks up on. Uh, okay, it's it's kind of working, but it, it's putting it's definitely putting the the room in place. Let me just go into another room so you can see it's kind of drawing half of it. So yeah, there's the there's the full room, and that's fine. But when I go down this way, it's kind of drawing half of it correct and then half of it incorrect. So we're we're almost there, but not quite. Uh, so what is going on wrong there? Let's have a look. So is it that it's drawing these last two rows in the wrong place? I think that's probably what is the problem here. So the rows that it should be putting it on, uh, this looks to be the right row. Oh, no, 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 no. This should be 16. That's why. Because we've got C028 here. I keep forgetting that screen ran. I'm, I'm, it's set into here because of the HUD at the top. So I think that might fix that. I think Sharon's fuzzy logic has gone all fuzzy. <laughs> I mean, it's about as fuzzy as you're ever going to get the fuzzy logic to be. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of spot on now. So obviously it's going to do down when it means up, but um, it's because we just need to reverse it. But it's kind of all right. Again, we've got the, the problem with the particles just eating into the scenery a little bit. Um, but that that's fine. I expect that to happen. It will happen if I'm over here as well. Um, it's just because the particles don't know when they're off the edge of the screen at the moment. Um, but this is this is feeling pretty decent. Uh, it's moving fast enough for it to feel similar enough to the original, um, and compared to most flick screen platformers flick screen games um having that that scroll like that is kind of nice the only thing i would like to do is make the the sprite move across the screen with the screen which we'll do in a second um but so far this is looking pretty decent let's get the the up routine working as well yeah the the up routine hasn't been done it's just falling through to the the scroll down at the moment um so I'm going to copy this now, and we're going to go the other way. Uh, but yeah, that that's what I mean. Well spotted. That's that is what's happening. It's just it's just running the scroll down routine. So okay, so we're going the other way now. So we need to start kind of at the bottom uh, and work our way up. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start at twenty, uh, and I'm going to move our way up like that. So. Which means we're going to be taking, so, right, we're going up the screen. So that means the screen should scroll down. So that means we need to take our current row. And copy it two spaces ahead like so. So this is going to do that routine and that's fine. Um, And now we need to do the kind of opposite. So we, we same as we did down here, um, where we took the value and we subtracted um, this. So we need to do this basically. Um, we did this one. And we transfer it to X. So what we do need to do here now is we need to take sixteen. I think. Let me think about this. Uh, the width is forty. Minus two uh, is 38. So the height is 24. Minus two is 22, which is 16. Yes, that's fine. Okay. And then that way we can do the map lookup again. Uh, and this time it needs to be printed at the top. So this is going to be zero, zero. Uh, and otherwise this will be the same. Um, and then here we can just load the scroll counter back again. No, no point in dealing with it in here. May as well just deal with it in here. And I think that should be it. Let's give it a try. Squint of deep thinking. Yeah, maths face. It is my maths face. Booze and maths does not work for me. I'm pretty good at maths usually, but um, 
but trying to do maths when I've had a drink is is not the easiest thing in the world at all. I'm glad it's just this simple. It could be a lot worse. Seems to be working. Sweet. All right. So the only problem we've got is these these bits that uh, get wiped out here, uh, which is due to the particles um, appearing kind of basically off screen almost. So, um, but this is this is looking pretty sweet actually, and for a flick screen, this is unusual. I've not seen many flick screens uh, games do this on the C sixty four, so this is nice to have. So the next thing I want to do um, is, what the hell is that? Tick oh, it's a strong one, I think. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, make the sprite uh, scroll with the screen. Uh, now, this is going to be a little bit trickier, um, but it shouldn't be impossible. We should still be able to do it. Um, actually, it's not going to be that tricky thinking about it. No, it's not going to be tricky at all. This is quite simple thinking about it. So all we need to do, let's do let's go through one at a time. So this is what happens when we, we scroll the screen. Now, as soon as we start scrolling the screen, we, we move the player over to that side. So we're going to get rid of that code and we're going to deal with this ourselves. So the way we're going to deal with this is if you go off the left side of the screen, we're going to start, as the screen scrolls across, we're going to move the sprite with it at the same time. Um, and the same with the right as well. So we'll do left and right at the same time here. So let's do these first. So in order to do that, we need to take the left and right value. So I'm going to copy this code just so I've got it. Um, and we'll go into the scroll left and scroll right. So let's start with the scroll right. Um, so let's put now, now uh, shift the player. Okay. So if we're scrolling to the right, that means we've gone off the screen to the right. So everything's actually moving to the left. Uh, then all we need to do is subtract a value each frame from these. And that value is going to be based on the screen uh, left and the screen, uh, the screen left and the screen right uh, edges. So we can do uh, this and we can subtract. And then this value will be screen edge right minus screen edge left which gives us the the difference between the two edges of the screen uh this will be the same in both this calculation will be the same in both except one will be an add one will be a subtract um and that value needs to be divided by however many frames this is going to happen over so uh this is a horizontal scroll um so this is happening over 40 frames but we're doing two Two frames at a time so it's actually over 20 so if we just divide this by 20 here uh, let's do this in hex for for completion's sake um, and store that value and then we can uh, actually this needs to be on this one and then we do the upper byte uh, which is taking this one like so uh, get rid of that subtract zero on this side this should shift the player. Oh, what is this? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. It sounds like bagpipes on helium. It is. It's bagpipes on helium. Okay, so then the other way is basically the same thing, uh, but we add instead of subtract. So we, we do this, and we add here, and add here. Okay, let's try it out. So it might be that we move too far or too little, or we we could end up in, uh, oh, player x. Oh, okay, so I need to grab player dot player x. Okay, so that's a little oversight there. See, when you don't have kind of um, dependency injection, uh, like you do in object-oriented object -oriented programming, uh, 
having to reference things across files like this is a little bit painful. Um, it kind of it bugs me a little bit that you you kind of do this. Um, oh my god! <laughs> Who's picking these tunes? Who picked this one? Eldritch. Are these just random random tune picks? Just bet here. It's he fill out all the pitch challenge code and think, what the hell is that? <laughs> Hope you mean that in a nice way. Okay, that didn't actually move the character over at all. And the reason that didn't move the character over at all is because actually we have this happening in here. Uh, and this is no longer being called. Um, so we need to make sure that we update the multiplexer data as well here. Um, so I think I need to do this, uh, I'm going to put it in, actually, I can just move this into, uh, here. If I just do this, hmm. no, I'm, I'm trying to be, trying to be smart about how to do this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do. Um, I'll put a label in here. I'll call it apply uh, mplex data. And then from inside these routines, so scroll down, so scroll left and scroll right. So inside here, I can do player dot control. Actually, I can make this a jump. It doesn't need to be a jump to subroutine. It can be a tail call. Uh, so it'll immediately exit and apply those those positions as well. Anyone having a midnight snack? No, but I'm kind of tempted. I don't know what to eat, though. I've got some bacon, but I'm not going to cook bacon sandwiches at this time. There we go. And that moves across the screen. So now we stay in the doorway. So so things things look normal when we move across. So that's kind of neat. Um Yeah, I think I want to move those screen edges and I think they need to be a little bit um I think they need to be a little bit more on, on each side. So I'm gonna reduce it to only four pixels off on each side. So I'm gonna move it in eight there and I'm gonna move it in eight there. I think it's a bit too too far off screen when it happens. <laughs> I'm starting to like you. Peanut butter is gross. No peanut butter at all is the only answer. That looks good. It's moving with it. Okay, so now we'll do the same the other way. Also, not Marmite either. Marmite is disgusting. The only good thing with Marmite is to put a blob of it in sauces and stuff. But definitely do not eat marmite on toast. Like people who put marmite on toast. Oh my god. It's not good. I don't know why they do it at all. Maybe they just hate themselves. Maybe people who like marmite just hate life. I think the only way to live is to to just eat the grossest thing possible uh, on on toast, which should have delicious things on it. Mind you, people say the same thing to me about liver and liver pate and stuff like that, and I absolutely love that stuff. Liver pate on toast. Chicken liver pate on toast. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Uh, okay, right. I'm getting distracted by the, the thought of liver pate on toast now. Uh, okay, so let's do the up and down. So the up and down is basically going to be the same thing. Um, 
So scroll down, it's going to be here. Except now we don't need to do two, two bytes, we only need to do one. Uh, we're moving down the screen. So as we move down, we actually need to move up. So this is um, correct. Uh, but now we need to use screen edge top uh, here, screen edge bottom here. And instead of dividing by 14, we need to divide by um, half of 24, which is 12. So it should be 0C. Um, and this would be player Y. And then we can jump to player control, apply max data, multiplex data. So we've got that on there. And so now to do the same thing for down, we just do exactly the same, but we use um, plus instead of minus. So, so clear the code bit here, and then add here. And that should be enough. That should give us proper scroll in every direction if I press the right button. Mm. Okay, so let's check. So going this way, fine. Let's go down. Uh, okay, so a little bit of a problem. It scrolled me to the wrong place there. Okay. Um, let's have a look at our routine. Let's figure out what we've done wrong here. So we scroll screen edge, screen bottom minus screen top, divided by 12. Okay, that should be correct. Why is that not correct? Uh, maybe the, maybe the difference between the two, uh, no, that should still be. We're doing two rows at a time, so 24 rows, which means there's 12 frames to this, which means we need to subtract the difference between the bottom and the top divided by 12. So that would be, in this case, uh, 188 divided by 12, which is going to give us, uh, I mean, what is that? That's 20, what was it? One, two, 188. So it is, it's a bit less than something and two thirds. So, um, it's 15 and two thirds, but that, that would still mean it's subtracting 15. So it should only be out by 12 pixels, but this is a lot more than that for some reason. Um, Twenty four divided by zero C. Yeah, this should be correct. I don't know why this is wrong. Like if I put this, if I put this back to this, it's probably going to scroll too far in that case. I'm not sure why that's wrong, but um why is it y plus one? Because we're using fractional values for x and y. So y plus zero is the fractional value. Don't care about the fractional value in this case. Oh that's what happens if you try and scroll off a screen that's that's got nothing on the other side. That didn't move me. That's like it's gone all the way around. I, hang on, I want to watch what happens to this sprite. Let me slow it right down. I want to see what happens when I go off the screen. It's like it's moving far too quickly here. Where did am I just going the wrong way? Is that what I'm doing? Am I just being an idiot and going the wrong way? So if I go up, the screen is going to scroll down. Oh, yeah, I'm going the wrong way. That's what it is. God damn it. All right. And, uh, set carry bits. This should be subtract. Which means if I'm going down, the screen is going to scroll 
Wait, if we go down, the screen is going to scroll up. Yeah, so... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. If I go up, the screen is going to scroll down. Oh, yeah, which is correct. It's not... Uh, no, hang on. No, 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 no. If I go up, I'm at the top of the screen. So when I appear on the new screen, I should be at the bottom, which means I need to add those values, not subtract. So that is correct. Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking tune. All right, let, let's uh, let's divide it by a huge amount just so we can we can see what's happening in slow motion. So let's do it by forty. I don't quite get what's going on here, but um, it's not. Just, it's because of my my terminology. I'm using scroll down when what I actually mean is the player has gone down and the map should scroll up. So there's a couple of different layers here. It's like I've gone down, the screen should scroll up. Which means if the screen scrolls up, the player must also move up. Yeah, which it is doing. All right. It's kind of hard to think about that stuff. This fucking tune. Who discovered this? Was this one that... Um... <laughs> was was this one that somebody found? Or was it, did somebody already know this? It's work, it works fine that direction. That's the annoying thing. Oh, 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 God, okay. Um, now it's flying through memory. What's going on here? This is, this is really bizarre. Let me just subtract eight from it. Let me, let me just see if I just do it with hard-coded values. Because oh, these should be fine. These values should be fine. Right, so when I go down, it does move me up a little bit. And when I go up, it should move me down a little bit, which it does. But nowhere near enough. So let's have a look at what values we were putting in here. So the values we were doing were screen edge bottom minus screen edge top. So let me bring the calculator out. So let's put it in programmer mode and in hex. So it, it, well, it doesn't matter if it's in programmer mode. All right, so 238 minus 50 gives us this. Divide that by 12 gives us 15. So it's moving 15 pixels per frame which means if we're at the top times that by 12 they should have put it as 230 and if we're at the bottom um minus 180 it should put it at the top so this should fucking work why is it not Anyone think for a reason why that would not bring these values out? That is the value we should be adding. And for some reason, that is not the value. In fact, I could probably put a breakpoint here and see what value that is actually trying to add. That's probably the way to do this, isn't it? All right. Um, there why. Yeah, this should be fine as well. All right, then let me put a breakpoint in here and then I can see as it happens. You put jingle bells on. Oh my God. What's wrong with you guys? September, for God's sake. Eight. 
Okay, so it's saying subtract 15, which is correct. That's the, the right value. Um, so let's see what happens as we move up. But you see, it's immediately put me up here for some reason. Why has it done that? Why has it so quickly moved me up to that position? Let's see what happens next frame. And then it starts moving me. Okay, that's really weird. So the first time this goes in, it actually subtracts more. It's subtracting a, a much bigger value here uh, than it than it should be doing for some reason. Oh, I know. I'm being an idiot. I'm being an absolute idiot. It's because in our player loop, <laughs> I'm such a fool. Uh, the STA, no, it's not the STA, sorry, Y plus one. Yeah, the problem is, is I'm overriding that Y plus one because when we do the uh, check if we've gone off the screen, I turned them off on left and right, but I didn't turn them off on up and down. So we're actually setting those values on up and down. So this should fix it. I'm an idiot. That that should have been really easy to pick up. Should have remembered what I did. Why am I humming to fucking tunes? I should not be humming to jingle bells. Or whatever that is. Yeah, it's jingle bells. annoying isn't it when there's certain tunes from your childhood or, or just from life in general that um you're always going to know but yeah this is looking pretty good right so let's so on this screen edge here you only have to push slightly on the edge and you go in there so that i like that that feels that feels solid down here though you have to go quite a bit off um so let's change those top and bottoms. Let's make that um, 54, 234. Let's see if that, how that affects it. You missed 1987 good times, yeah. What was I on in 1987? I was probably still a Spectrum owner in 1987. Or I just, I, I'd, I'd need to check. I did check a while ago because I did an interview with Freeze and I did check um, what year I got the, because I had a Spectrum and it broke and I sent it back and they couldn't, they couldn't fix it or they wouldn't fix it or my mother wouldn't tell me that they, um, you know, that, I, I mean, it broke because I wired a scale electrics to the IO port. That's why it broke. Um to the expansion port um, without a resistor on it or anything. So it just blew up the, the motherboard. And obviously the engineers looked at it and probably went, well, he's blown something up here. And my mother, rather than tell me I couldn't have it, um, I think she probably just kind of put it off for months and months and months and then got me a Commodore. Uh, where it was the best thing I ever did. Blowing up a Spectrum was the best thing I ever did because I got a Commodore. So I can't argue with that. It was a decent one as well. It was a Spectrum Plus 3. It wasn't like a shitty rubber key one. It was a half decent uh, Spectrum. But the my initial reaction to getting the Commodore was like, what, what the hell? What is this? I don't want this. I want a Spectrum. I've got a pile of disc games I paid for, saved all my money for and bought, and you're giving me a, a machine that they don't work on. Hasn't even got a disk drive. I'm going to now load from tape. What's going on? And then I loaded the first couple of games from tape. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all right with this. It's all right. No, don't, don't give me a Spectrum again. I'm, I'm quite happy with this. Okay, this is this is pretty good, I think. Um, I'm going to... I think the down is probably all right, but I'm going to nudge the top slightly down as well. I'm going to do it at 56.
Uh, is it possible to move the sprite a little further between transitions past the drawn white borders for a sense of motion, like on the Switch, I think? A little further between transitions. I'm not sure what you mean. Past the drawn white borders. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, so you kind of appear. Well, that's what I've just done. Actually, I've just I've just prevented it from going that far. Um, I might I might have to have a look actually at the Switch version and see see the difference. One of the one of the big differences between the Switch and this version is there is a ten frame pause. So it's it's hard to notice because it only happens in about two hundred milliseconds. Um, but when I go between screens, there's a ten ten frame pause between the screens um and that's why i'm kind of bringing it right to the edge but maybe it's maybe you're right maybe it needs moving i i I'll, i'm gonna leave that i will take a look at it but um i will i will have a look at um i'll, I'll have a look to see if i can find um a good video of it happening so come on sid requests are weird let's have a look uh oh don't include the slash at the beginning if you put the slash at the beginning it will fail that's why let me um let me i can request that for you so it's fine so mch techno looper uh because if you put a slash at the beginning it, it thinks it's um uh it, it thinks it's a, a command also no quotes as well don't put quotes don't put um don't put the slash at the beginning. Uh, two said, okay, two said. Yes, found it. There you go. Yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, the, the the Twitch API will interpret something that starts with a slash as a command, so you have to ignore that slash. It's, it is quite annoying, but um, there isn't really anything I can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Just just ignore the slash at the beginning and, and you're fine. Uh, but that's queued now. Should should be coming on fairly soon. This sounds pretty decent, actually. Sounds like a kind of proper, mellow, kind of well, early, early decade dubstep, basically early last decade dubstep. And this sounds like early last decade hard house. <laughs> we'll go through the dance music tonight. Oh god, Andy, I think you may have found something interesting there. Worst compo tune ever. Interesting. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. I'm going to have a think about what to do next because this has actually gone a lot smoother than I thought. Um, I think one of the things I can probably think about doing is looking at um, stopping the particles when they get to the edge of the screen, and uh, hopefully this will get rid of these kind of weird glitches that we've seen. Um, might as well start thinking about them now while it's fresh in my mind. I just want to have a quick look at what memory we're using. Um, Okay, so we're using quite a bit of memory here. I mean, we're using 10K for the, the code as it stands at the moment, but we have got a lot of unrolled loops. I think a lot of this is to do with unrolled loops. Um, I don't think there's any major need to unroll them yet because we are loading everything from cartridge. So if if I was to uh, slot the music in here as well and say the music takes 4K, then we'll be up to about 4,000 in memory. Um, now, all the Vic stuff is all at the top end of memory, so that doesn't matter. We don't have to worry about that. Um, and that will still leave 16 kilobytes free for code, just code, uh, before we even get into the 16 kilobytes that's hidden underneath uh, cartridge and basic ROM. 
uh, which can be screen only code. So that's another 16 kilobytes there. So even with music, we've still got about 32 kilobytes for code left and we can bank things in from cartridge. So we could even change these routines um, to be part of cartridge code and just have them bank in as, as necessary. Um, and that will have very little impact on, on the, the, um, uh, in fact, it will have almost no impact on performance, but it, it will actually re remove the need to unwrap all these, um, as we are doing. In fact, we're only unwrapping, uh, there is a little bit, there is probably a little bit, um, of extra stuff going on here, but it should be fine. I think. Since rates push a little bit first, when you do, you don't have to move further before a 90 degree turn. You just press the door frame, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. So you mean bring it in a little bit. All right. I'll take a look at that when I come back. I, I get what you mean there. So instead of being right at the edge of the screen, you've moved a little bit further in. Okay. That should be fairly easy. When you bank in cart ROM contents, how much cartridge memory can you have? Uh, so the cartridge that I'm going for at the moment is 512 kilobytes. There are one megabyte uh, versions of Easy Flash. There are one megabyte versions of Magic Desk. Um, there is Gmod 3 coming out in the near future. I don't know exactly when, which supports way more. I think it's something like 16 megabytes or 32 megabyte cartridges. So you can have quite a lot. Um, and as we saw last night is you can do, uh, so physical production, uh, really only Gmod. Gmod is, is probably about the only one you're going to get a, a physical production for, um, uh, because it's the only one that really suits kind of a production like that. Um, uh, but you can create, um, you can create your own magic desk, one megabyte cartridges or your own easy flash, one megabyte cartridges quite easily. Uh, magic desk is cheaper, but it doesn't have save. Uh, save EEPROM. Uh, so if you use Easy Flash, it costs a little bit more, uh, but the new versions of Easy Flash let you flash them over USB. They're really, really easy to use. Uh, Magic Desk is a little bit tricky. You need an actual EEPROM burner, uh, but the cost is a lot less. Like um, I did some uh, Lunar cartridges not long ago, and I think the most expensive thing on the whole thing was the cartridge case itself, which was about a pound, one pound fifty or something like that. The whole cartridge, even with the sticker on it, cost me less than a fiver to make so um that's why i gave 10 of them away on the stream so um all right i'm going to take a quick break guys i'll be back in uh five minutes or a bit less be right back oh i like this it's a bit hardcore yeah this is this is this is hardcore techno this is awesome Check the name. Check the name. What name? Oh, is this the worst competitor? I like this. This is Ga yeah, Gabba Techno. <laughs> I used to, I used to go and listen to this in uh, Milton Keynes. So I used to go to big uh, warehouse raves in in Milton Keynes in my youth. I used to go and listen to this sort of stuff. The a lot of DJs that ended up being drum and bass DJs actually like Groove Rider and Loft Groover and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I used to used to go and listen to them uh, play this sort of stuff in very very sweaty warehouses with people just basically bouncing like crazy to the music. So, <laughs> I've never been to Ministry of Sound. I've been to um. The only club I really, I've been to a couple in London, but the only big one I've been to in London is Fabric, um, which is, it's a nice club, very good sound system, but the the clientele are, uh, leave something to be desired. They're, they're less than fun. <laughs> um, but the, the club itself is great, but the, uh, and the sound system is absolutely rocking, but the, uh, the, the people, the people that frequent that are a little bit strange to say that least. so. Do I still no, I've not been for a long time. So uh this was this would have been early nineties. This would have been early nineties. Uh, I don't I, I don't do that stuff anymore. I'm I'm too old. <laughs> but yeah, I used to go to all the you know, the uh what was it, Dreamscape and Health Skelter and all those those sort of things. Um all right, let's uh let's
after the suggestion that men touch so let's let's move the character a little bit less on each frame so all i'm going to do just to see if this will work is i'm going to just subtract one from this value that we're going to add so um, let's do it on the the left and right first so let's do it on this one here so all i'm going to do is just put a minus one on the end so we're just going to be one less pixel per frame as we move across um, now this might be too much we might have to change this value here instead um, but i just want to see if this kind of creates the right effect if in doubt subtract one yeah so this this should have the effect of of kind of reducing the amount we move over the screen but it, it may be a bit too much that it's reduced by um i just want to see because it is probably going to reduce by about 20 pixels in each direction so actually that's not that's not that bad Navara stream i've been in a few Navara streams if it's who i'm thinking of need to check there yeah i've been in Navara streams <coughs> yeah i don't i don't go in them often but i, I have been in there um i think that's probably right isn't it i think that's the i reckon you should speed up the screen flip but at the very end of the flip do the last few pixels slow the problem is it isn't moving uh it's moving 16 pixels at a time now so that would in that would mean creating two scrolls two scroll routines which would take a bit more memory i mean we could drop them into into um into cartridge one which would save a bit of memory but uh, i think for now i'm i'm gonna leave it as is if i need to do a bit more uh to it i i can look at that later on i think um but i get what you're saying it's it, yeah I, I i definitely get what you're saying um i'm just not sure it's worth the effort right now um I mean this is this is pretty pretty good. I actually do think it's just a little bit too much over there because if I go this way, oh well, maybe not actually. That's probably about right actually thinking about it. Let me let me nudge the edges back out again a little bit so we'll do that. Yeah, it's just not a priority at the moment. I, I think um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is moving those routines into cartridge ROM, um, which if I do, then it will make life a little bit easier. However, moving it into cartridge ROM means I can't use self mod, so I'd have to do a little bit of extra code in there. Um, it's just I think it's just a little bit too much. It's just a tiny bit too much. I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep nudging these out a couple of pixels at a time until I get the the, the desired result. It's just moving a little bit too far across the screen. So what Mentat was saying is if you if you move from one screen to another, so say I move from this screen to this screen, it leaves you in a position where you can go straight down if there's a if there's an edge here and there's a like a ninety degree turn. However, I think it's still moving me a little bit too far across the screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust those values in here. So instead of doing minus one here, I'm going to change this value here. So I'm going to stop using hex here. Uh, oops. Oh, for this divider here. Uh, so instead of dividing by which is essentially 20 here and then you divide by 20.5 um the assembler will round this value to to the nearest whole number actually i think it will floor it um but it means that we'd only need to we're, we're doing minus a half on each each thing instead here uh with some rounding as well so we can we can adjust these values accordingly
See, now it's not enough. So it needs to be kind of somewhere in between that. So let's go with 20.25. The problem is it's still it's there's still a lot of integer maths going on here, so that's not enough. E oh, two five is hang on two five. I should have gone the other way. Seven five, not two five. Yeah. Hang on, is that right? No, 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 no. Hang on. Ah, uh, hang on. I know what I'm doing wrong here. I should be going. Like this. Oh yeah, I I absolutely agree. You, you can't. I, I've said this a few times on my stream. The the game has to feel spot on. Uh, it's the tiny things that make games feel good. Um. And you can have the best idea in the world, but if you don't... Oh, there you go. It's, I was the right side. You can have the best idea in the world, but if you don't implement it um, with polish, it's not going to feel right. So sometimes it is just a matter of tweaking values over and over again until you, you get something that feels right. Um, and just adding the little things in. Like, so like, we could have done this game without the transition, right? We could have just gone straight into the new screen. And it would have been a perfectly acceptable port of this game. But but if we're using the cartridge and we can do the transition, why not do it? We may as well just do it. But it's still not quite right, is it? It's just a little bit too far. Well, I'm going to get this value wrong. I'm going to get this value wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on going to the left now. Um, Yeah, you could. Well, I could do that really easily, easily in the debugger. But um, to be honest, the amount of time it takes to set it up, I might as well just do it this way. See, it's, it's either not enough or or too much. So instead, I'm going to add it into here instead I'm going to get this right I am going to get this right yeah I've, it's because the, it's still at its heart doing integer stuff uh, because we're we're doing this like 20 times or so uh, Simuleos with the raid thank you very much dude Hey, Simularis, thank you for the raid. Welcome along, guys. Um, no. <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow, Akluaramis. Akluaramis. Oh, that's a hard word. That's a hard one to say. Um, oh, that's that's almost right. It's almost right there. And a grumble bomb. I like that name. That's That's kind of rolls off the tongue. Uh, how am I? I'm I'm good, thank you. We're we're just working on a C64 port of a, a game that recently came out on the Switch. Uh, thank you, Made Fresh Daily, for the uh, follow there. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're just working on a, a C64 port of a uh, of a Switch game. Uh, well, actually, it was a, a PC game first. It's just uh, turned into a Switch game recently. Uh, and the the publisher the, the publisher that released it on uh, helped AAA release it on the Switch has approached me to do a C64 version, uh, so that's what we're doing here. <laughs> I triggered your uh, your thing. Uh, the particles clear. Yeah, the particles do clear the map. Um, it's it's the next thing I want to do when I get this working. The reason they do that is because when the particles hit the edge of the screen, they don't remove, uh, they just wrap around, which means that um, the occasionally there's places where they start clearing the map and doing some stuff. So, okay, let's give this a run again. Uh, 
Now, at the moment, we're just I'm just tweaking around with magic numbers uh, just to see if I can get this screen transition just right. So uh, it's not that one; it's this direction I care about. Okay, so it's it's still a little bit off. I'm going to nudge it out a little bit more. Um, let's do twenty here. I don't think that's. I'm not sure what that's going to do. Let's let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay, so it's going this direction. Oh, and it's too far now. This is the thing. I think we we hit we hit a boundary that is. It means that this value is is changing all the time. Um, well, not changing all the time. Sorry, it's uh, because it's been triggered more. It's been triggered twenty times in a frame. Um, the and there is some rounding that goes on. Uh, the integer adds up to either. 20 pixels too far or 20 pixels not far enough. Um, so we may have to just t t pick a middle ground. Um, uh, oh, no, no, this it's a good rabbit hole. These are the sort of things that I, I have to get right. But I, I think what's happening here is basically because this, yeah, because it's been applied 20 times, um, we're 20 pixels too far over one side of the screen. So another sneaky way that we could do this is on alternate frames, we could just add one back to the um, to the value, uh, back to the thing. So we, we could just keep this the same like that. Um, and do minus one here. Uh, Actually, do you know what? I'm going to leave it like this. This is going to be one of the polished things I'm going to do towards the end. I think I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time on it now. I have an idea what to do, but um, I want to. I want to fix the particle stuff. So I don't know how they made the best of what they had. Yeah, exactly. The the problem is with with hardware nowadays is um, all you have to do if you've got a game that um, isn't performing very well on recent hardware is just wait a little bit and. Um, and, uh, oh, isn't this why you have fractional X and Y? My God, Fura, you this is exactly why I have fractional X and Y. You are spot on, of course. Of course you are. My God, this is so obvious. All right. All right, let's, let's do this. Okay, so basically we have a value that we're adding here. Um, but what we probably should be doing is taking this value... Let's get rid of the minus one here for a second. Let's get rid of the minus one here. Let's get rid of these surrounding brackets. I forgot we've got fractional values. This is absolutely perfect. You need, you definitely need points for that. You definitely need points for that. Right. So we're going to create a variable here and this variable is going to be this value. And this value is going to be times 256. So is that right? Yes. So what this is going to do, this is going to create a fractional value, uh, uh, well, a 16-bit value, where the upper 8 bits are going to be the value we need to subtract here, um, and the lower 8 bits are going to be what we're going to subtract from our, um, uh, from our fractional value. So um, we put, call this shift here. So then all we need to do... Oh, God, Furo, you're a lifesaver. That's a really obvious idea as well. I can't believe I did not think of that. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. This is why coding on stream is so good. You get so many helpful tips. Right, cool. So now what we're doing is we're actually moving um, fractionally as well. So this should actually be slightly different. So let's copy this data into the scroll right and let's see if we can get this working in both directions uh, so the difference here is this needs to be subtract uh, that needs to be set carry flag and this needs to be subtract and this needs to subtract as well 
So actually, I'm going to call this uh, H shift, H shift, H shift, uh, which means I can put it outside of the loop. So I can use it in both. So I can just adjust it in one place here and it'll apply to both. Uh, and the reason this works is because H shift will be recorded as a, a, a large value. Um, but when you um, use these uh, less than and greater than signs in, in um, Abs, uh, in immediate mode addressing, you're actually grabbing the upper eight bytes and the lower eight, uh, eight bits and the lower eight bits of it, upper and lower eight bits. Okay, so let's let's try it, make sure it, it still works and then we can hopefully tweak the value um, and be very, very accurate with how we do this. But yeah, for is exactly right. This is exactly why we have these these values in here, so. Okay, so this is just putting it exactly at the edge of the screen, which is exactly what we thought. So now what we need to do is we need to reduce by a little bit less each frame. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this to do 20.5. So we're going to reduce ever so slightly less each frame. And this should put us 10 pixels inside the next screen because we're doing 20 frames. Uh, well, not no, actually, that's not quite right. It's but it will be it will be less. And there we go. We've moved in a little bit. So if I divide it by a little bit more, we should move a little bit more. So let's divide it by twenty point seven five. Oh my god, so good. All right, that's that's the best best advice of the night. That. I've, I even built the system to work with fractional values. Why didn't I think to use fractional values? Yeah, see, look, see, look how we, we're moving just a tiny little bit further each time. So all I need to do is just pick the value that's going to work for these. Uh, so let's go with uh, 21.75. See if that works. It might be too much. If not, we're just tweaking these values now until we get the right... Thing. It is obvious in hindsight, yeah, yeah. The power of power of the stream, and and tonight the power of four. I'm Mad Beagle actually. Mad Beagle's caught a few things. Oh, look at that! That's spot on. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I want to be able to go into a screen like this and go down and immediately not hit. That's that's exactly what I want. Cool. All right. So let's apply that same logic to the uh, vertical. Um, so we'll create a, a V shift in here. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that, call it V shift, and then I'm going to go and copy the code that we're using for the V shift, uh, which is where has it gone? Here it is. Okay. Um, Oh, so I should probably put that at the top instead of just there. So times two, five, six, and make this uh, a value like that. Okay, let's move this up here. Scroll map. Let's let's do it in here. That seems like a good place to do it. Oh shit! I've lost it. Have I lost it? There we go. Cool. Uh, okay. Right. So. We're going to do apply exactly the same method here to the up and down. So we've got our up here, which is using add here. So all we need to do is uh, copy this routine. That will be the upper byte of uh, V shift. And it won't have that there. And this will be the lower byte of V shift. And that will have a zero and that will have a zero as well. And then we just copy this into down here and change the adds to subtracts. Right, let's see how that looks on a vertical. Um, so we're programming a C64 game based on, uh, well, it's a, it's a port basically of a, a game that was released on Steam last year, I think, and Switch about a month ago. Um, okay, so this is putting us bang on the edge here. So let's increase the division. Um, but what we're trying to do is, is, uh, leverage the, the power of, um, 
the cartridge format, which is what we're we're using here to do some stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to do on the C64 without the the use of a, a cartridge like this. Uh, and I'm also trying to implement some unique stuff as well. So we've got particles in here, uh, which is which is one of the things uh, Checkanoid is quite um, known for. I mean, certainly when you watch the videos, it's one of the things that stands out, the, the particle system. And while we're not going to be able to do something quite as extreme as the, the stuff you see in uh, Checkanoid, we, we should be able to do something fairly decent. Um, okay, so this is going to... Let's let's try the value. We just need to try the values. So what we're looking for is when we go down a screen or up a screen, that you appear just above the row of tiles that you um you started on. So when I go down here, uh, it's not quite enough. It just needs to be a, a little bit more. So let's change that to thirteen point two five. Uh, a tiny bit more. I'm I'm not going to do a lot, like thirteen point three or something. <clears throat> I need this. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look. That's good. It's like one row of pixels between the top and the bottom of the sprite. And we're right on the base there, which I think is going to be... Yeah, that's going to be acceptable, I think. Uh, I mean... At the most, I could probably add one more. Let me try 13.5. Let me do a little bit more. 13.35. Let's try that. I think it just needs a tiny little bit more than the um the amount I'm giving it, just so you you don't run the risk of causing a collision. So yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. And then on this side, yeah, you've got about the same distance on each side. So a little bit more on that side, but then we do have. In fact, it's quite a lot more on that side, weirdly, but uh, it looks fine, though. But now we've got some tweakable values, so I'm going to put a little comment in to say that these uh, divisors are... Uh, tweak divisors here uh, for... Whoop. Here, um, to adjust... Uh, screen edge final positions cool uh, okay right uh, device. okay let's take a look at the particles now so um, one of the things the particles is not doing or, or are not doing should I say is um, disappearing when they hit the edge of the screen so we need to take a look at the update function which is this one here uh, and take a look at what's actually going on inside these. So uh, this is particle finex, particle delta x. Okay, so we have fractional x and finex, and then screen position, which is the one that we update. But this this thing here is probably what should be um, actually finex. No, finex is not the right value. Finex is the value within a character. So let me just have a look at what we've got in the particles. So we've got uh, fine x, fine y, fractional x, fractional y. But we don't actually have x and y. So we don't have an x position and a y position. We just have these screen positions here. So we're going to need to add those in, that's for sure. So, so this is this is char x and char y. This is, this is not quite the same as fractional x and fractional, uh, as uh, fine x and fine y. This is a, an eight pixel interval. Okay, so that means when we spawn this particle, we need to do, um, we need to set those values. So where do we spawn the particle? 
particles, init particles, draw particles. Where's the add particle? Clean the particles, update particles. Ah, no, where's the Do I have another routine which is adding these in, maybe? Seems a bit odd that I would put them somewhere else. Also, why have I not wrapped that in a... That's, that's frustrating. Uh, okay, well, we can check by looking at the... Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, we can check by looking at the player routine. We should have in here the player exhaust. Okay. Uh, Oh, so actually in here, we're, we're updating, uh, we're adding the particles directly in here. Um, so we probably need to do this with um, a different routine because think about this. Yeah, because this is this is just adding directly into the list. We so we the reason we don't have an add particle at the moment is because we've not had to add a particle over than the exhaust ones, and the exhaust ones are calculated in this way, um, which makes me wonder: should this be another function somewhere? I think we probably do need another function. Um, because otherwise what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to check the memory address that you're in the memory address that you're currently trying to draw in and where the particle is about to go to and that's not going to be that's not going to be a fun thing to to check every frame um now collision lookup do you want to get collision lookup okay let me look at that Okay, what I can do here is in zero page, so we've got collision lookup here. So I'm going to put collision char x. And collision char y. A table of chars in column one and 40 positions. Yeah, but then I've got to loop through every single position. Um, Yeah, I'd have to loop through all of them, which is 24 rows on both sides. That'd be 48 checks per particle, which would be too much. So what I'm thinking is, is uh, so this collision routine is what we're using to, uh, to place these particles. Um, so I'm thinking of using that for this one. Um, as I, I don't really want to change the, uh, sorry, the, the this one. I don't really want to change this method, um, but what I might do is for the rest of the particles, is for the generic particles, is have something that it actually deals with. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. So, but it's still, it would still be checking every time a particle moves position, it would still have to check. They would still have to check against those positions. Of course, there is there is another way to do this as well, which is um, to have a, a secondary space character. So you have a space character which... Yeah, which sits in the door. But again, I think one of the problems here, actually, is not so much... Not so much that you fire particles through the through the screen, but you can get in a position where your exhaust is never even rendering on the screen; it's just immediately going off. Uh, actually, it's kind of hard now with this. Actually, that's probably all right like this. 
but yeah, you see there it's it's doing it. Okay, so let's do it again in here. So they're fine there, but if I go close enough to this edge and turn around. Oh no, they're not doing it now, typical. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure that is the problem actually anymore. Yeah, I need to do it for secret. Yeah, I've already thought about that. So there is a secret passage um, just up here, I think, um, which will need some of these characters to be non-colliding. So they, they will have to be special versions of those characters. Or um, there will have to be special code for this screen, which just says, nope, you can walk, you can, even though they're collidable, you can go through those. Um, so that could just be... Um, kind of a secret table for that that screen sort of thing but then that allows you to go in here also i noticed that the um the level layout is a little bit weird in that um i think because this screen is a lot longer normally uh it fits onto the screen better whereas here is it doesn't so i think that the the secret may have to start over here somewhere um to fit this all on one screen because i think this is one screen i don't think it's two screens like it is here um pretty sure that's not on that screen i'm pretty sure that's on the yeah see that there's the there's the problem with the particles um yeah it is one screen yeah i thought so so it might just need some slight adjustment screens but again this i guess uh Salem is this is what you'll be doing you'll be kind of arranging these screens in a way that's going to work for um the, the kind of compressed nature of what what we've got here uh, this is just something I threw together based on, on what you sent me, so uh, just to test things out. Okay, um, uh, let me think about this. So let's store the ch collision char X and char Y, because that's going to be useful anyway. Um, positioning sprite space. So... G temp one. So this value here is our, I want to say, X position. So let's store that at um, position chart X, uh, which means I don't need to use it here. I can use this here instead. Um, and then I'll also store this at collision chart Y. So really all we've added in is one extra store in here, so that's not bad, and that's a, a three three cycles, I think. Um, okay, so that gives us a collision char X and Y, so that means we can now set them. So one of the things, so at the moment when we're doing the, the exhaust, we're manually setting all these particles, um, which is fine. That, that's absolutely fine. We can do that, and you can see here we're setting the uh, particle LSB and MSB. We can also manually set um, those positions as well. But once we've set these, this will be um, what's it? Collision. These will be updated by the particle system. Um, so these won't have to be uh, updated manually. They'll be updated um, by by the particle system. So I'm going to like chart X, and then I can do the same. Actually, I might as well just do it. Instead of making it complicated, I'll just do it like No need to do it one line at a time. I might as well just do it like that. Okay. Um, so now we've got a char X and a char Y for these particles. And that means that in the routine that updates these now, whenever the fine value crosses a boundary um so in here whenever this crosses a boundary which is i don't know where this would be i need to figure out okay uh here basically screen fetch so minus yeah so it's this bit here 
Okay, so at this point, we will also do um, load accumulator with collision char x. Add one. And if this is 28, then we've gone off the screen, in which case we can go to, do we have a clear? Oh, we don't have a clear, we don't have anything to actually clear the particle in here. Uh, okay. Oops. Okay, clear. So clear is basically going to take the value of zero and store that at uh, particles MSB comma X. Okay, so in our X movement here, okay, that needs to be done. Yeah. And there's, if it's less than that, we can jump to here. Otherwise, we jump to clear. Okay, let's just do left and right first, and then I'll check that that's working. Um, and we'll do it on the other side as well. So. Just be a branch if positive. Okay, right. I'm not sure if this is going to work. This is a risky change, but let's give it a try anyway. I think it should work. Um, can't remember a good place to do it on. Uh, oh, right. We can go up and do it, can't we? So if we if we go up onto the screen. Okay. So no, there's still. They're still moving over that way. And they're still moving. Actually, they're moving. No, oh, the odd one breaks through. That's kind of weird. Uh, hmm, interesting. Why does every now and again one come through? <laughs> Oh, I think I know why, because I'm doing the wrong thing. It's not this that I should be adjusting. It is, uh, there we go. Steps gambling just enough to get to get to exactly three hundred thousand. I like it. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's see if that has a positive effect on the way. So the up and down is obviously broken, but the no, it's still see, it's still taking a chunk out on this side. So I mean, we we needed to do that anyway. Um, but it's it's not it's not perfect still. I need to figure out why, but that that definitely needed doing. So we'll we'll put that in there. We'll do the same with the the up and down now, um, and then we'll work out why that's happening. So this is Y movement positive. So this needs to go here, and this is particle char Y. And this is screen coordinates, so that would be 90, 
19. So I need to have a think why that is happening on that side. Uh, it won't be the max enemies on screen at once. Um, I'm not sure. So we've got enough sprites in the multiplexer to do 26 enemies on screen at once. Um, but obviously that's not going to be um, enough for some screens. Um, and that doesn't include, you know, if you've got uh, power ups and stuff like that. And also, you still can only have eight on a line. And remember that the main guy is is two sprites. So if you've got two sprites and you've got your little uh, drone thing going around you, that's going to be three sprites potentially in a line before you even include enemies. So that's going to be five enemies only in the line. Um, I do have some ideas. Um, so a lot of the enemies when there's a lot of them are very tiny. So um, it's possible to use some clever tricks to create, um, because we've got cartridge, we can bank in as many sprites as we want, right? So on that particular screen, what we can do is we can bank in sprites that contain a single sprite, a uh, single enemy in one sprite, two enemies in one sprite in various positions, three enemies in, in one sprite in various positions, and then pick which ones on on top of that so with that it's so if we if we say did um sprite kind of combinations like up to three sprites in one sprite then that would give us a total of 15 sprites 15 enemies in a line in front of us um and a brand total of if you say three sprites for the the player uh 25 so that would give us 75 sprites on a on a screen so it wouldn't be too bad um but it depends it, it it remains to be seen how easy that is going to be to implement i i need to do some calculations and maths to work around um to work out how many how many that's going to be able to how many we're going to be able to fit in the in the available vic bank if there's any flicker in the game will that bother you or no big deal i i think it's without a doubt there's going to be some multiplexer flickering i think it's going to be really really hard to um to do that in any other way um but i'm going to try and limit as much as possible if the screen is particularly flickery then i'm going to try and find a way to to, to stop it from flickering uh, i'm not treating this as an engine that just runs a set you know you, you give it a screen data and then it runs i'm treating each screen as its own little challenge basically so it's going to take a little bit of a while there will be some screens that are just straightforward and they'll have no special stuff in them uh, but there will be screens like with lasers or large amounts of enemies or or special things going on so um in those cases those screens are going to be coded individually so we're going to go into those screens we're going to write code that just applies to that screen you know uh, reduce the number of particles increase the number of sprites or vice versa or create a different sprite system or join sprites together, or have different IRQ splits. So there's all sorts of things we can do. Um, no sign's going to allow any glitches. Yeah, I'm going to try my best not to. Um, it's, I, I don't think we'll we'll get rid of every glitch. I think there will be a couple in there. I, I think it's going to be almost impossible to avoid uh, just because of the nature of the game. But um, we'll do our best to get rid of most of them. Uh, that's why it's important to get all these other bits as polished as possible. If you can polish something, polish it. Then when when there is a little bit of a glitch later on, people are going to be more forgiving because the rest of the game is it's kind of nice. Um, if the game is is basic and doesn't have any polish, and the only time that anything cool happens, it starts glitching like crazy, then people are going to get kind of pissed off with it. So. Solid white screens are no glitch, yeah. Okay, I think this is this is working fine now. Um, the particles are being clipped off the screen now. We will have to do the same with the bullets as well. So if I if I shoot off the screen here, you'll see the bullets wrap around and just keep going, and they'll keep doing that until they hit something. So we need to do that with the bullets as well at some point. Um, otherwise, you can have these kind of screen wrapping bullets, which is a I mean, it's a nice 
nice power up, but it's not a power up that's in the game. So <laughs> we'll be getting rid of that. Um, but we do need to work out why the particles are still destroying. It's still doing the, the clear routine. You see there, it cleared cleared some values here. So, so that happens in uh, the game loop here. So we've got this uh, clear particles loop here. Um, I think that's what's happening. I think when it's clearing them, it, it, it's doing this. Uh, in fact, we can confirm that if we if we go in and draw something other than um, the, the particles in there. So if we draw like, a, let's have a look at the fonts that we've got. Uh, not that one, let me... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't care about that. It's just test data at the moment. Yeah, so if we put like 208 in there, we'll see a zero appear. So <coughs> that's what I'm thinking. It might it might erase after a particle is turned off. So, so that's why I'm going to go in and uh, change it. It shouldn't do. Because uh, the clear particle routine is also checking. Um... Oh, actually, no, it's not. Look, it's not. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, bonus points to you there, Andy. Bonus points to you. Okay, so. Um, hmm. This is going through the particles. Through the characters. Hmm. Okay. Let me I'll tell you what. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, it's getting quite late, but I will do another hour because I I kind of want to get this fixed, and I'll probably fix the uh, the screen wrapping bullets as well. Um, but basically, what's happening is I'm using zero page. Um, I'm actually using the X index zero page here to do a fast clear. So this was one of the one of the ways of um, clearing the particles really quickly. But the effect that this has is that these these particles um, are still gonna it's still gonna try and clear all of these particles. Um, so maybe what I need to do is is think about how this routine works. So let me. Let me just go and have a quick smoke and go to the toilet. And then when I come back, we'll, we'll take a look at how we can fix that. I think it should be easy enough to fix. Um, the thing is, is this routine is is built for speed. So I really don't want to destroy this routine too much. Um, so I've got to be careful how I, I change this. All right, back in uh, five minutes, guys. Be right back. Okay, I think I know how to solve this issue. Um, I'll let the race come up again. Come on, race. There we go. So part of the speed code that I wrote for this was when you draw the particles, it actually stores um, the clear values as well. So once it's drawn a particle, it stores where it needs to clear that particle as well. Um, so it uses this ZP clear particles, which I think is in here somewhere. Yeah, here. So it stores these values here, and that means that it, when it does the clear, it doesn't then have to go through the part because it's already been calculated. Um, it's also really cold. I need to turn off my fan here. <clears throat> so all we need to do is when we clear when we kill the particles here we just need to clear these values as well now i have a feeling that these values there, there's probably a little bug here which is not causing us a problem at the moment um and i think the bug is that these values should be when a particle is killed these should be be set into zero and at the moment we don't really kill a particle all we do is we just don't draw it when it when it appears which means when the clear happens it's going to be right into zero at, at the start and then later on it's going to be drawing wherever the last particle was which is the problem when we go into this new screen so what i need to do is first of all i need to change the kill particles and this will actually fix the initial issue but there's going to be a, a another bug i think which is going to occur which is that these really should be um it, it should be staggered and it should be right into a value that we can set to zero uh or we can clear so we we just need a, a, a 
somewhere in memory where we can set a value. Now, the easiest place for that is obviously going to be at the end of screen RAM, there's 24 bytes, which are, uh, which only eight of them are used. So the last eight are used. The, the 16 that come before that are not used. So I think we're just going to set those set the values to clear that space there and then it won't have any effect so and i'll do that by changing uh this value in here uh this this fill in here and changing the kill particle routine and changing the um not the clear but whenever the update particle does this thing here whenever the particle is cleared in this way um it will be changed to to actually fill these values incorrectly. <clears throat> so let's do the let's do the clear particles first. So kill particles. So this requires uh, another loop. But this time we need to increase x by two each time. And basically we need to. Store two values here. This tune is manic. What is this? <laughs> it's, it's hard to focus with this one going. So this is the LSB and this is the MSB. So our screen runs from uh, C000. Uh, plus a thousand oh, that's plus a hundred plus nine hundred so this is the last uh the the byte after the last area of memory so this is what we're going to set instead so um c3 e8 so we're going to set e8 in here and we're going to set c3 in here um and we need to compare that to particle char count times two minus two i don't know why it's minus two um Okay, well, that's what we'll compare it to. So, oops. And that will, that will reset all those values so that they appear in that space off screen. So, it does seem rather fast. Maybe that's why it feels weird. All right, let's give that a try. By the way, guys, you um, this weekend I'm going to take a list of the books that are in the uh, book suggestions channel uh, on my Discord. If you have any suggestions for books, it's your last chance uh, to do it on Saturday, probably just before the stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through that list and and, and pick out the uh, the the books that um I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the kind of choice that you'll have for the giveaway which will happen the, the saturday after um so um the winner chooses from a list yeah because i didn't want to just give somebody a load of books that they may already have so um i'm going to i'm going to create um a, a curated list of these books and and the prices that they are and you'll have i think it's about 100 and, 120 pounds i think they'll be so it'd be it's like you're going to get a book token for 120 pounds basically but you you pick the books from the list and I'll I'll get them shipped out. Yeah, I'll include Amiga books. Uh basically anything Commodore Amiga related, even Z80. If you want some Z80 books, I don't mind I don't mind putting them in the list as well. Um just just add some books to the suggestions. Try to use Thrift Books or Amazon. I'm not gonna be do, doing any eBay purchases. Um so just just stick to stick to Amazon. Uh, preferably uh with international shipping um and stick to thrift books as well um i need to look at the shipping costs but um i don't mind giving all my z80 books away yeah but yeah any any kind of retro retro any kind of retro uh books i'm i'm willing to kind of add to the list so feel free to add them the last, last chance will be uh probably sometime Saturday afternoon, but I, I would say do it before Saturday afternoon because um, I'm going to try and curate that. I, I kind of want to share the list with you guys on Saturday. So you've got a week to kind of look over the list and decide. 
um it will be the same same um giveaway as normal it'll be two two thousand five hundred channel points per ticket you'll be able to do three tickets uh, and whoever wins will uh, be able to select up to 120 pounds from from that list um, i'm going to try and include the shipping costs in the prices so um so it's kind of fair on, on the shipping as well i don't want to be stung by a load of uh shipping shipping costs um which is why we're going for Amazon uh, and Thriftbirds because th those two sites will ship internationally. In fact, with Amazon, it will probably be sent to you from your local uh, Amazon rather than uh, overseas. Thriftbirds will be overseas, I think. But um, anyway, right, let's let's give this a try. So I think this is going to solve the initial issue, uh, but there's another potential issue that, that could crop up, which is when the particles are killed, they're still going to be clear in that spot. Um, which at the moment isn't a problem because we've only got the exhaust particles. But when there's lots of stuff going on the screen, it could cause issues. Yeah, it seems to have fixed it. But let's just move around screens a little bit. Yeah, I think that's solved it. Definitely not getting any clears that we were getting before. So let me try moving through the edges of the screen. Books from Amazon USA is okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is if you if you list a book, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the what I, what I'll probably do is cap it at a hundred pounds, and then if there's any if there's any kind of strange shipping problems in there, then um, I've got a bit of money to cover it as well because this all comes from the uh, patron money anyway. So, um, and I think I was I think it was. 120 140 pounds or something like that but i want to make sure i've got shipping covered so i'll 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 work out what it's going to cost and i'll do it i don't mind paying a little bit up front for it but um obviously i don't if i'm shipping like three books to australia and they're coming from america it may the shipping cost may be kind of extortionate so i just need to make sure i'm covering that as well okay i think those particles are fixed now So what I'm going to do is in the kill particle, uh, not in the kill particle, sorry, in the uh, clear particle here. No, not the clear particle, sorry. When the particle is removed, it says clear here, but it's not actually clear. It's just removing the particle from the list. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to actually adjust that to um, to set these values for the are uh, these. Oh, they're setting the draw function, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, so to change these values here. So, um, oh, actually, no, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter because this is done on a on a loop on an update loop. I think this should be fine as it is actually. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right, let's uh, let's fix the looping bullets then, because that's definitely one that needs fixing. So let's look at bullets. Okay, so bullets do have an X and a Y in them. Uh, I don't know if we're setting those values. It looks like we are actually. Data Y, data X. So they are being set. Draw bullets, clear bullets, update bullets. Yep, and we're doing we're doing some stuff here to increase. Um, It's been stored and on load. Oh no, that's loading direction X. Okay, so we're not actually adding uh, store offset. Okay, so this is adding a screen offset at the moment. Um, <clears throat> which okay is is kind of okay, but what we probably need, also need to do here is make sure that these offsets are also updating the x and the y as well so uh so let's do char x offsets char y offsets actually these are just char offsets they don't even need to be char x and char y uh, and that's fine i can actually use this one here um so i might as well use that but i'm going to put that label um here Uh, 
So this is calculate me offset. So let's, so this is where it's applied to screen RAM, but we may not even need to do that. So um, before we even get to that value, uh, which is, let's just load it again here, because we will actually need that there. Uh, before we get to that, we will do uh, char offset shift. Okay, so we're going to take the same method here. Uh, which is where we're going to load the Y with our direction and then grab our direction chart offset from this. Uh, comma Y. Uh, and then we're going to add that to our uh, data dot data dot X. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then store that at data. X. Right, so now what we can do is um, uh, put char finish there and we'll put uh, put it clear here. Now I think there probably is a bullet has hit something here so we can probably move bullet clear to there actually. So let's Like so two L's though, spell it correctly. Uh good night, Hayes. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. Sleep well. Okay, right. So now data.x contains actually this needs to be data.x comma x. So now this the accumulator contains the X position, the the new X position of the bullet. So um let's call this X shift okay, what I'll do. So um so if the value is minus, then we're gonna go to here, which is gonna jump straight to actually we can just jump straight to bullet clear here, can't we? I want to call it bullet clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually we don't, don't need that X shift. Okay. We can do all the branches here. Otherwise we're going to compare it with 28. Uh, if it's more than that, then we're also going to go to bullet clear. So now we've done the char offset for the X and Y. So the Y is less important. Um, no, because it could corrupt memory, so we definitely need to do the Y as well. So let's do the Y, okay. So same again, if it's minus, then we go to bullet clear. If it's more than the bottom of the screen, um, which would be 25, I go to bullet clear. Okay, so hopefully now this will work correctly and then the only thing I want to add to the bullets which isn't there at the moment is the little um, explosion when it hits hits something on the on the wall um, which I'm just trying to think how how best to do this I think that can be animations in here so I might add some uh, animations in 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 this bit here um, because no zero need for us to do this with particles, that would be overkill. Um, but it will create the illusion of particles without actually adding any more particles in. So, all right, let's give this a try. Uh, oh God, of course. All right, line two, four, nine bullets. Relative address is illegal, also in bullets, line 167. Make sure I'm not using too many of those, should be fine. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so the top top screen here is best for this. So cool. Cool, and now the bullets are contained within the screen. They don't go... Actually, they do go off the top here. Um, so I do need to stop that. So that is basically in the uh, check here where we check if minus. It just needs to be check if equal rather than minus. Uh, so we do this check here. If it goes from zero to off the screen, it goes to FF. Um, but what we actually want is if it goes from one to zero. So if that is equal to zero, then we'll bullet clear. Um, we shouldn't be moving more than one uh, character per frame anyway. So I think that's probably all right. Um, will it be slight glowing trails? Yeah, it will, won't it, actually? Yeah. Actually, can we do that? I think we can emulate that in here, can't we? Let's have a look. Sonority emulation. Oh, I thought there was like a I thought there was like a frame leak thing in here, but maybe not. Uh, blur, maybe no. All right, well let's let's see what it looks like. That should look green because of the weird CRT tint. <laughs> but yeah, they, they've stopped going off the top now, so that's perfect. So actually, the CRT adds a kind of weird green tinge to it. So, uh, Although I think that's because I actually set it like that. Although I'm not seeing... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it does. It needs a proper CRT to. <laughs> it's looking pretty sweet, though. It's looking pretty good. Um, so let me think if we add a particle animation on, could we be sneaky and just do one animation for every direction? I think we probably could. Mm -hmm. No, because it needs to know it needs to know where the point of origin is, so it would have to be one for every direction. It would also have to do some smart stuff to work out which direction it came from, and whether it's hitting a wall, a, a side wall, or a... Okay. Let's get some enemies going. Um... No, it's not time just yet. The the next, I'm just trying to think what the next steps are going to be here. So I, I think one thing I definitely need to do is this this particle effect. So there is an effect when you hit the wall. It's very subtle, but I think we should put it in anyway because it will just add some nice stuff in there. I think the next thing is actually going to be um, power-ups here. So, so destructible scenery, I think, is going to be next. Um, now, to a certain extent, these are destructible scenery as well but what these will do is they will start like this and then they will turn into sprites so they will be they will be characters to begin with but when they activate they will turn into sprites they will be replaced by blank space a sprite will appear and it will move toward you so maybe we'll get onto some sprites um at some point just trying to think what else i need to do to get what we've got solid um, I also want to put the music routine in, so I'm not going to put the actual music in yet. Uh, in fact, I haven't been given the actual music yet, and I think it's probably better to save that as a surprise um, at the end. But um, I would like to put the music in so we can check that when we move screens, we can get that working correctly. Because there is a hit, there is a pause here. 
um, and that pause is going to cause issues. So um, I also want to get the, the, the shared characters working because you'll see if I do it really slowly, you will see a glitch in the, in the characters that appear at the top. So watch this top row. See how they glitch out? So the reason they're glitching out is because there's too many characters in this screen and they're overriding the ones in the other screen. Um, you can barely notice it um, at full speed. It's, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but it, if you're looking for it, you can see it. So I'd like to fix that, um, which is basically to kind of come to, I, I kind of can't really do much about that until I get the full, um, full map uh, and I know what the common pieces are. I mean, I know what some of the common pieces are. Things like this are obviously going to be very common. Um, likewise, full areas like this, uh, the borders here, these are all going to be common pieces. You can see them on this level. You can see them in this level. Uh, and that's going to reduce that. The more we, the more of, the more we share characters between screens, the less that's going to happen. Uh, I don't mind if it happens ever so infrequently, um, but obviously the 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 more we can get rid of that, the better. Um, so I don't think it happens at all on that screen. It's only on certain screens, and it's only when the 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 reason it happens is because the um, the the number of characters we've got available is 208, 207 actually, because we the space is shared. So we've got 207 characters and that needs to be the most number of characters that are unique between two screens and unique per screen, but over two screens. So you count all the unique characters on the previous screen, count all the unique characters on this screen. That's how many characters we've got. And actually going between these two screens, that's fine. We're not hitting that limit. Uh, but going into the into this screen here, uh, we're definitely hitting that limit. But as I say, I think a lot of that can be fixed by sharing these. Because every time you share a tile, so this entire tile is four four characters, right? So if I share that, that means okay, there are um, there are now four characters less, so there'd be 203 characters. But now we'd only need, uh, we'd need eight less than we had before. So if we were on 208 out of 207, then we had have one character that was broken. But if we move four characters into the shared set, if we're down to 203, we need eight less, so we'd only need 200. So now we'd have three spare. So the more we move into the shared set, the better, but they, they need to be they need to be picked smartly because they need to be characters that are on every screen or almost every screen so that they, they don't cause problems. I think the borders are probably the, the right one to pick for this. Um, I might actually call it a night there. I think that's, that's pretty good progress. I'm not going to play a game tonight. I'm just going to, just going to call it there. I think, um, I'm not sure what we'll do next. I'll, I'll have a think about it. I think I want to do the, I think I want to do these uh, pseudo particle effects against the wall because they're they're going to add a nice kind of dimension to the the game. I think, um, and then maybe we'll start looking at destroyable pieces. So like these are destroyable here, um, and these are destroyable as well. The stuff that doesn't need to be uh, sprites but can be destroyed. So uh, yeah, there is some screen shape as well. Screen check will be easy though. There's there's no splits or anything going on in there. It'd be be very simple to add. Um, but yeah, we can we can add those in. Okay, right. Um, I'll let that raffle finish out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and check for someone to raid. I don't know who's on. Hungry's on. Lyrial's on. Uh, Naysayer is on. Let's raid Hungry. I like raiding Hungry. It's a soothing voice. Did you play in another RPG? It looks like... That's how I go. I'm not sure what that is, actually. Yeah, not sure what that is, but we'll go raid it anyway, so... 
there are some other video effects that might be difficult. Red chip. Oh yeah, that's not going to happen. There, there's no easy way to do that. So, um, but there, there's there's a few there's a few things that we're not going to be able to do. But as long as we get as close as we can, we should be we should be golden. All right, let's go and raid hungry. So yeah, cheers for coming along tonight, guys. Thank you for coming along early this morning as well as it did. Um. Yeah, if if sprites separate, that will be easy because you can just move the sprite and do the red and white. That would be fine. But um, whole screen stuff will be difficult. Um, let's let's take a look on Saturday at um, fixing some glitches in Pick and Mix. So that's going to be the next thing on the cards. Um, and we'll go through uh, some... I might do some level designs myself on Saturday. All right. Um, thanks for coming along, guys, and I'll see you all on Saturday. Take care.